we're back this time we're on chrome we ain't on that microsoft edge shit i don't know what the fuck it is about microsoft edge every time i go through edge it like hangs up it'll freeze and then it'll just like disappear i think this edge has way too many i probably got pop-offs or whatever you call them pop-ups i probably got pop-ups and shit all on microsoft edge and i gotta go through clean up microsoft edge but it seems that you can browse a lot faster on edge but google chrome's a lot faster for live streaming and it's like, I don't get it. I don't fucking get it. But one of these days, I'm going to figure, like I said, I'll just get rid of fucking Microsoft Edge completely. Chrome's been doing me very well lately. Very well. Yeah, right, Shirley. It's, I think it's got to be, it's got to be fucking Microsoft Edge. Every time I use Edge, the shit freezes and just drops. And when I use Google Chrome, it just floats right through, no problem. But Microsoft Edge is good for like browsing. I could browse on Edge and that shit be flying. No, man. I was still online. This, this damn Microsoft Edge shit, man. And Edge just did an update the other day because it made it tried to make me download this update and I wouldn't download that shit. I was like, nah, because y'all be fucking up too much. But it still moves fast for like browsing. When I go on YouTube and I browse, I'll go through Microsoft Edge. I thought if I can use it for a live to see what happens. Nope. It's on the same shit. Same shit. What up, E Love? What's good? What's good? <laughs> so I had to go next door, but the party continues. <laughs> Hey, Drew, you right, man. You right. Fuck it. I had to go next door. Fuck this shit, man. We going to the apartment next door. Apartment 11. Shit. Apartment 10 was kind of jank. Fucking table broke. <laughs> hey, what up, E-Love? My man. Yeah, Firefox. I don't know. I might have to try Firefox because I know Microsoft Edge. Man, I don't know. It Ever since I've been trying to do live streams, even when I was in the garage doing it when before summer hit, Edge just was not the shit. So I had to go over to Google Chrome. It, I don't know, man. I just got to I got to try. I'll try Firefox one day. I'll do a live with it and see if that shit can just if it can hang. Let's say that. See if it can fucking hang. Man, Mr. Gambit. Shit. Hey, it's hot as a month. Hey, you see, I got this little fucking thing back here. See this? That's my little my little cooler right there. It's fucking keep my back nice and cool because it's hot as a motherfucker, man. Shit, I got the AC at the house running. The motherfucker is stuck on like 78. I got it down to like 72, I think, but it won't get cooler than 78. Like it's it's that damn hot out here to where the house won't even be cooler than 78. Could have something to do with I got a doggy door. That could have something to it. But back to where we were, man. Yeah, we was talking about how, you know, we look out for other drivers in our region. And that's why I think more drivers should talk to other drivers. Ask them what kind of rides they like. And, and like I said, you're going to meet a lot of haters out there. A lot of motherfucking haters. Hating to see you doing well. Hating to see the fact that you're not failing. Hating to see the fact that you're actually successful, even on a small fucking level of ride share, you're successful. And they don't like that shit. So what they're going to do is try to keep shit from you. Oh, don't tell them about that concert. Motherfucker, there's 20,000 fucking people at the concert. Why are you going to keep the concert a secret? Like, oh, I ain't going to tell nobody about the concert. That way we can just keep getting all the rides. Motherfucker, at some point, the surge is going to pop up on the fucking map and we all going to see it. And when we cruise down there and see your fucking car there, we're going to realize what type of hating motherfucker you are. So what we do is we say, hey, we share information with everybody and let all drivers in. Because if ride share does not succeed in this city, if it implodes in this fucking city, nobody's eating. Nobody. So in order for us to prevent the shit from imploding, because there's a lot of ride share companies popping up every fucking where we stay together as drivers. We don't wait to go on strike. We stay together now while we still alive and we can do it. And I'm one of those people that I know I can't take every fucking body. I just know that it's like mathematically fucking, it cannot happen that I can take every fucking body to concert. So I share shit with Juan. Hopefully Juan passed to like five or six other drivers. I share with King James. Hopefully he passed to five or six other drivers. That way when we're all showing up, getting all this fucking money, we're all able to drive again the next week and the next week. Next thing you know, we're a month deep. Now we're all stacking money. We're sharing information. And that's how we stay together as drivers. These hating ass motherfucking drivers out there. Oh, we got secrets. We you got to pay me for that secret, man. Fuck you. Ain't nobody paying your raggedy ass for no fucking ride share secret. Get the fuck out of here. That's why you'll never see me do a Patreon. And not that Patreon's bad. A lot of people talk about a lot of things that they don't want the general public to fucking know. So they run Patreons and shit like that. But everything I say, I just say it to you, motherfuckers. I don't care. I say this shit on video and I be riding around just talking to shit. There's nothing that I say that is so fucking marvelous. That I think you can Patreon me to hear it. Really, no. I'm not that fucking incredible of a person. Everything I say is shit you can just walk out the door and see. Anybody else out here who thinks 
you know, I'm gonna run a Patreon because, you know, I know how to do motherfucking heart surgery with a fucking plastic spoon. Cool. Maybe you can tell everybody how to do plastic surgery with a fucking plastic spoon or whatever, heart surgery. But that shit's not important enough for a lot of fucking people. We just want to know, how do we get out this door? How do we make enough money to make sure we can take care of the fucking people inside of these walls? How can we do that? And that's what these channels be about. A lot of channels be about some bullshit. Like I said, you'll never see me do pranks. I don't do gimmicks. I don't do pranks. I just don't got time for that shit. Man, we got to stack fucking money because one day when these motherfucking apps deactivate one of our ass, you're going to be like, I got deactivated, but thanks to Jeff, I've been pushing like, man, I got $23,000 sitting in the fucking bank, Jeff. 23 G's in the fucking bank. I just got deactivated. So I got a little money to take care of my shit while I figure out my next fucking move. The worst time to be deactivated when they got you by the fucking balls. You got $600 of your motherfucking name. You deactivated. Now you stress the fuck out. I don't like people around me to stress the fuck out. I don't like that. Because if I got information that can help you out to keep you from that fucking level, why am I charging you a fucking Patreon like it's a goddamn secret? Ain't you my homie? Ain't you? Ain't we cool? And I understand, motherfuckers, about, this is how we get money, though. This is how we get money. Cool. I'm just not cut like that. I ain't never been cut like that. And it's cool because everybody going to keep their Patreons going, and I'm not knocking that shit. Like, motherfuckers keep coming to me telling me, Jeff, you should start a Patreon. Jeff, you should start this. Everybody got a motherfucking great idea on what I should do. I'm like, dog, I'm cool, man. I'm not fucking greedy. I've never been a greedy fucking person. I've given away cars. I remember I called my motherfucking cousin one time. Irv. I said, Irv. What are you doing? Nothing. Hey, I got this fucking Saab 9-3 sitting here. I was going to swap the engine out on this motherfucker and keep it. It runs. Ain't nothing wrong with it. it just It's got a, you know, a thrown rod, a spun bearing on it. It's a fucking Saab convertible, everything. I drove the bitch over here. Do you want it? Yeah. I gave him the key. I gave him the title. My next door neighbor, Jesse. What's up, Jesse? Shit. I had a second white Cadillac. Hey, man, I got this convertible Cadillac in my garage right now. I just bought a fucking Mercedes. I don't want to sell this Cadillac because I don't feel like fucking with nobody. You want it? Jesse was like, yeah, I want it. Here's the keys. Here's the fucking title. My son, dad, what you going to do with that motorcycle in your garage? Keys, title. Do you know how many motherfucking cars and shit I've just given away? How many motorcycles I've given away? Do you think I give a fuck about a Patreon? I don't. I've always been a fucking giver. I don't need shit from nobody. All I need is for you not to fucking stress. Do not stress. The money's going to be there. Sit in this motherfucking parking lot. Relax for a fucking minute. Get your mind right. Let the shit rides go. If somebody looking for a $20 ride to get their ass on that side of town, give it to them. Don't fucking stress. Keep cool. We're going to get this shit going. I've always been like that. And a lot of people don't understand me. They jump on my motherfucking page and they don't understand who the fuck I am. I have walked a long walk through the streets of fucking Memphis, fighting motherfuckers in the goddamn 7-Eleven parking lot, fighting motherfuckers at the bowling alley, fighting motherfuckers at Kroger, fighting carrot chows, fighting in Greenbrier, St. Louis, fighting at Saints, the motherfucking skating ring, fighting at Kirkwood High at the fucking gym. I've been through a lot of motherfucking shit to get where I am. But your raggedy motherfucking ass to come on my channel and say, Jeff, you should do this. Motherfucker, you don't know me. You don't know me. I don't stress for a reason. I don't stress because I have stressed enough. And I know stressing will get you no fucking where. You know what's going to get you somewhere? Figuring that shit out. That's what's going to get you somewhere. Figuring that shit out. What up, Aaron? My man. <laughs> said Ramos and Jeff Tyson. No, oh, man, when you grow up in rough neighborhoods and shit like that, motherfuckers gonna test you. They gonna test you. Because some people just, they just, you know, I, I look at it like this. A lot of people in the, in the hoods we come from fight because they ain't got shit else to do. They really don't. These motherfuckers is walking around bored out of their motherfucking mind. And I grew up in that era. Motherfuckers just bored. Hey, you wanna jump somebody? Hey, you wanna fight somebody? Hey, you wanna go try to get somebody money? I grew up in that shit. So that's the shit I had to dodge to get where I am. I ain't stressing nothing. When motherfuckers are like, you ain't scared to drive at night? I'm like, dog, I was about fucking 95 pounds, 100 pounds walking through Memphis every fucking day. I was like 95 pounds walking through fucking Memphis, Tennessee. I am 225 now. Do you think I'm fucking stressing? <laughs> I, if I didn't stress at 95 pounds, the fuck I'm going to stress at 225 for? I can take care of myself. I'm good. If it's my time, it's my fucking time. That's it. What up, Dashing? My man. Hey, he know how St. Louis is, man. The same way, man. We grew up fighting in these streets, man. We grew up swinging in these fucking streets. Saints the nightclub down at the landing. Motherfucking the Oz. Motherfuckers, we've been fighting all through these streets. This, if it was time to go, it's your time to go. And it ain't shit you can do about it. Motherfuckers landed. 
planes crash, cars wreck, fucking, you know, buildings crumble. Like the other day, the girls was practicing the gym and the fucking volleyball. What happened? The fucking whole roof fell while they was practicing for fucking volleyball. They ain't running the streets. When it's your time, it's your time. You ain't got shit to say about it. So quit fucking stressing. Go out. Focus on making this fucking money. That's all you got to do. You go out there and you make your fucking money. That's right. The big... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All up and down fucking St. Charles Rock Road and shit. Man, we done had, man, we used to fight that. I remember back in the day, we used to fight on Natural Bridge of Kings Highway at the White Castle that sit right there. That was the spot to fight. Everybody go to all the house parties. At the end of the night, somebody's going to be fighting at that fucking White Castle. Guaranteed. And that's just how it was where we grew up. So I tell motherfuckers, don't stress. If, if shit's going to happen, shit's going to happen because of just the way the energy flows. Try to keep good energy around you, and that's the only way you're going to get away from negative shit. Keep good energy around you. Keep progressive energy around you. Keep these motherfucking haters from your circle. And like I like motherfuckers that be getting on my channel, they're like, oh, yeah, man, I don't like this about your channel. I don't like that about your channel. Fuck you, motherfucker. Get off my channel because I don't keep negative energy around me. I don't keep stress around me. I don't need that shit for relevance. If you don't like me, motherfucker, see you. See you. Shit, I ain't got to, you ain't relevant to me just like I'm not relevant to you. And we've been doing okay in this motherfucking solar system up until this point. Who the fuck are you? See you. Motherfucker, Saturn is that way. Neptune is that way, bitch. See you. And I don't give a fuck about people like that because that's energy I don't fucking need around me. I know how the fucking world works. I know how universe works. I know how energy fucking works. You keep people around you that, that want to see you do well, you're going to do well. You keep motherfuckers around you that want to see you fail. They're going to set your motherfucking ass up and they're going to know where you at. They're going to know where you live. They're going to know where you roll. They're going to know how you rock because you kept those motherfuckers around you. Fuck them. So when I see people on my channel saying, oh, I don't like, fuck them. Right off the bat. I might block the bitches. I don't even know. Just let me think about it. You right, man. Dash and you right. You Hey, you had to get out the hood. You graduated out of the hood. People don't understand that kind of mindset, man. Because when you're born in the suburbs, you live in the suburbs, you grew up in the suburbs, and the only thing you can do is go up from the suburbs, you have no idea what the fucking hood is like. We got to graduate from places like that. We got to leave the fucking hood. Like, I see motherfuckers that make money and go back to the hood. I'm like, I don't know why. I have no idea why. It's like, I would never want to go back to a place where there's new energy, like the old heads there, the old heads are proud. The old heads are like, man, it's so good to see you doing well, man. It's so good, man. The grandkids is getting big, Jeff. Man, my son, you know, he getting married next month, Jeff. The old heads want to see you do well. It's these young motherfuckers, these new no-name ass energy motherfuckers that like to go around talk about, oh, who you supposed to be in that car? Well, who, where you get that? Motherfucker, you don't even know me. Motherfucker, I probably went to school with your motherfucking dad and helped his ass in some fucking fights, but you don't know shit about me. It's the young cats, the young energy out there that don't know shit. You see them all over the internet blazing their fucking guns and shit up in the air. They fuck around, shoot their own goddamn uncle and not even know it. That's how stupid they are. Yeah, I just killed this dude at the store. Dog, that was your uncle on your mom's side. For real? That's how stupid these motherfuckers are. They just shooting motherfuckers at random. So I'm one of those people that just, I don't fuck around with negative energy. I don't go to places where I know don't want to see me succeed. I don't fuck with people that don't want to see me succeed. Like I said, even on Dash the Trader's channel, even on channels like that, when motherfuckers are hating on him and doing shit like that, they can just be gone. If they don't like what Dash and Trader is doing with his motherfucking life at no level of the fucking game, what are you watching this channel for? He's going to be successful at what he does because that motherfucker don't give up. You are not stopping Dash and Trader. You're not. Give up. All the shit you saying, all the shit you talk, just unsub, give the fuck up. Guaranteed. One unsub equals 10 more subs. 10 motherfuckers going to sub him because they want to see how did he dig himself out of that fucking hole? How did he go from being deactivated to this point to getting back to where he is now? How did he do that? They want to know the fucking blueprint. When you fucking fail and your ass is on the ground and the next time a motherfucker see you, you pulling up in a motherfucking Bentley, they want to know how you fucking did it. They watching you now. They watching you. Of course, a lot of motherfuckers want to watch and see you fail. They want to see you fail. But more people want to see you rise in the shadows than they will ever fucking say. Haters going to sit around in the fucking shadow. So you can unsub, Trader. Trader get paid off of views and shit. This motherfucker going to make his fucking money. So you can sit in the, in the fucking background, in the shadows, and just watch. Watch how he fucking move. Everybody like, oh, he deactivated. Of course he's deactivated. The apps is after every fucking body. These motherfuckers after me. You think I'm going to be active forever? No, they're going to get me one fucking day. 
And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go look at Trader Channel. How the fuck this motherfucker get out of the hole? <laughs> <laughs> that's what you do. You looking for the comeback. Everybody's going to fall at some fucking point. But you keep motherfuckers around you that not only fall, but they know how to get the fuck back up. That's the people you keep around you because they're going to show you some shit you're going to go through. Like I tell a lot of motherfuckers, I've been through a lot of shit. I've been homeless twice as a motherfucking adult. Homeless twice. So how the fuck did I get to where I am right now? Because I don't fucking give up. I don't fucking give up. Give fuck what anybody say. Oh, dog. You divorced? Oh, that's what you get, motherfucker. You know, this and that, that. Next thing you know, they're like, damn, dog, how you get that house? How you get that car? How you doing? Exactly. Motherfucker, you stop watching. That's what it is. You stop fucking watching my moves. You thought I was done? You really thought I was done? Oh, you stop watching. You ever want to see a motherfucker make it somewhere in life? Watch them fail, then watch them come back. And at that point, you have to give them the respect of existing in this fucking universe because this whole fucking planet is made to take you the fuck down. We got poisonous snakes, motherfucking undertow in the goddamn ocean. We got motherfucking cliffs fucking falling. We got tornadoes and shit. This world is set up to fucking kill you and take you out. And your ass will still be fucking standing. And a lot of people don't understand how that energy even fucking works. Because they so busy hating on some fucking body else, they don't even see the, own, the shit around them. Just crumbling. All the shit around them is fucking crumbling. But they worried about the next motherfucker. It's like, that, man, that shit don't... That shit don't need no motherfucking, you know, no goddamn sign or label on it. Anytime you got bad fucking energy around you, bad shit's going to happen. Bad energy leads to bad fucking shit happening. Anybody who's spelling and can't seem to get the fuck up, half the time they putting too much energy and hoping somebody else fucking fail instead of fixing their own shit. Fix your, that's why you see me in the comments saying that shit. I tell motherfuckers, go handle your shit first. Don't come talking about my shit. I've been working on my shit. I'm doing my thing. So you go work on your shit. When you work on your shit, whether through looking at my channel or anybody else's channel, you could come back and talk to me now and be like, Jeff, I worked on my shit. I understand what you're saying now. Because for me to try to talk shit about somebody who worked on their shit and got to where they are was stupid of me. And a lot of motherfuckers don't think like that. We're old heads, man. Motherfuckers don't understand the whole concept of listening to your elders, respecting your elders. I am a fucking elder now. I used to not be one. I used to be 16 years old. I used to be 25. I used to be 32. I used to be 41. I'll be 50. I'm getting into the realm of elder now. If I don't have shit to give back to you, motherfuckers, what was I here for? Why was I on this fucking planet if I have nothing to give back to you? Ain't none of this shit a fucking secret. This is life. And I'm giving it to you, motherfuckers, in the form of videos, in the form of me talking and joking and fucking with y'all sometimes. I'm giving it back, hoping... Even if fucking 10 minutes of a video you watch give you enough fucking energy to know I just got six shit rides in a fucking row. I'm going to go home, take a fucking break, guarantee you come back out, you're going to get six amazing fucking rides in a row. And you're going to be like, holy shit, this motherfucker was right. Because everything always works out. We in 2023 right now. Everything always works out. Look around you. You got a motherfucking car in your driveway, I guarantee. 15 years ago, you probably didn't have that shit. Everything works out. And there's too many people stressing about shit, hating on shit, hoping that you fucking fail. And here you sit. Everything's working out. And it's like, he's it for free. <laughs> Thanks, Drew, man. I appreciate that, brother. I appreciate that, brother. Man, and like I said, it, it it's, you know, wisdom is, is sometimes not the most intellectually put fucking thing. I know I cuss and I say a lot of shit, but I told motherfuckers, I'm old school. Y'all don't understand the realm I come from. I come from the era of telephones still hanging on the fucking wall. There's people on this planet right now that ain't ever seen no shit like that. I came from talking on the phone, laying under the bed, because mom told me to go to sleep at nine o'clock, but I got to get this last phone call in, and I'm under the motherfucking bed trying to mumble and shit under a fucking pillow. I'm from that fucking era. Yeah, exactly. What's a VCR? <laughs> VCR. -a. Uh, motherfucker shit, R-U-H. What's a V-C-R? -a? Yeah, we from that era. So a lot of people don't understand why we think the way we think in 2023. Because we have seen shit in 1975, 1979, 1981, 1988, 2001, 1995. We've seen so much shit that what we're seeing now might seem a little off to us. This is all new shit. This is all new shit to everybody. New technology. And new technology moves very fast. I ain't never seen so many motherfucking telephones in my life. When I was a kid, you saw jumbo button phone, 
everybody had the same phones and shit at their house. Like everybody, that's just what they, we just bought phones and shit. Everybody had the same fucking VCR, the same fucking Pioneer stereo, the same motherfucking TV. Shit is changing so fast right now. Nobody can latch on to what's real. Shit's moving too fast. So like I said, like my man called me today telling me, Jeff, you're growing. You might need to do something a little fucking different because you're growing. I said, fuck that. I'm going to always stay me, man. And he wished me good luck. He ain't no motherfucking hater. He is not a hater. And I'll, I'll be the first to tell him that right to his face. And he knows how I feel about him. I love him like a brother. He ain't no fucking hater. He looking out for me. He's seeing the world change around us. And he's saying, Jeff, this world is not ready. It's not mentally equipped for the way you fucking put in shit. These motherfuckers around you are a bunch of pussies, man. We talk to a bunch of weak ass motherfuckers. People who, like me, I'll leave a restaurant. And if I don't like the motherfucker, I don't go back. Ain't nobody ever saw me post shit about no restaurant, shit about nothing. I ain't never posted no fucking shit about nothing. But you think I've always had a great experience at fucking Shoney's or Ponderosa or motherfucking Denny's or goddamn IHOP? I ain't always had great experiences. But I'm from the era of if you don't like the shit, don't fucking go back. But these motherfuckers right here, they sitting up there, oh, I'm going to go do a TikTok about this fucking place. I'm going to do a video about this place. I'm going to say this and that about this place. I'm going to make everybody. And have these motherfuckers to tell and have the story for one thing. You probably walked in being a jackass. That's probably what you really did. You walked in being a fuckhead, and now you're mad because nobody want to take care of your raggedy ass. That's the truth of what happened. Oh, I walked in there, and they didn't even say, like, hi to me or nothing like that. And Because you probably walked in videotaping everybody talking shit. But these motherfuckers out here, man, they this era now is so fucking weak, so fucking pussy. They got to record everything, put it on the Internet. Look, I went to McDonald's today and they fucking gave me half a box of French fries. You know what we did in my day? We gave the French fries back and we said either we want a refund or I want a big box of French fries. That's all we did. That was it. And the shit was done. It was done. Now. A motherfucking box of french fries can turn into an eight fucking day ordeal. Shit be on CNN, MSNBC, TikTok, motherfucking YouTube over a motherfucking box of french fries. And I'm sitting there like, this is the world we fucking live in now. These motherfuckers are really arguing over a box of fucking french fries on the internet in like six countries. What the fuck? I keep it real, man. I keep it real. In and out. <laughs> Say Uber mom, listen to, listen to your late night calls and the other phone randomly chimes in. It's time for bed. Yeah, exactly. Kiki. She'd be like, who is this? <laughs> I'd be like, hang up. If you hear my mom voice, just hang up. <laughs> don't don't answer back. She'd be like, who is this? It's not Jackie. Like, no, bitch, don't say nothing. Just hang up. <laughs> who is you talking to? And you can hear the in the phone. Your mom's still on the phone with you. Who was that? Who who hung up? Why you tell her to hang up? See? You motherfuckers be like, I'm going to find out who it was. I'm talking to her mom. <laughs> it's like, shit. Hey, we do that shit all the time. Tell motherfuckers, my mom jump on the phone. Just hang up. Don't even say she just hang up. Shit. I used to unplug the motherfucking caller ID sometimes. Mom be like, mad as mother. Who unplugged the caller ID? Because I'd be forgetting to plug that bitch back in. i am like, just call me and let, like, let the phone ring and then call right back. I unplugged the motherfucking caller ID. That little white fucking box used to sit on the fucking counter and shit. I unplugged that motherfucker. Like, fuck that shit. I don't want her knowing who the fuck called at like 11 at night. <laughs> we had all kind of shit back. And now motherfucking kids just got phones. They go to sleep next to their fucking phone and shit. Just text me. And kids be wondering why they so fucking tired, sleepy, and aggravated. Because you walking around with a fucking iPhone stuck to your fucking head till four in the morning. You can't even go to sleep. You just get notifications all fucking night. If parents took their kids' phones at 10 o'clock p.m. every fucking night, we'd have a goddamn nuclear war. Motherfuckers are like, wait a minute. You taking our phones at 10 o'clock? And giving it back to us when we wake up in the morning. Hey, that's how we grew up, motherfucker. We grew up the same fucking way. Shit. We would fucking get, she'd unplug the phone and take that motherfucker out of the room completely. You would get that bitch back in the morning when you're getting ready for breakfast. <laughs> motherfucker, we didn't play back then. We had real parenting back then. Man. Exactly, Roman. They don't know about real shit, man. Like I said, we came from a totally different era, which is why we think the way we think. And, a, and not a lot of people understand why we are the way we are. Like, even my sons, you know, I, I might be a little rough around the edges, motherfucker. You ain't seen what I've seen. You ain't walked to that part of the fucking jungle. 
You you was you came to the jungle when it was a paved road going through the motherfucker. You didn't come to the jungle when it wasn't number sticks and twig twigs and shit. We had to chop shit down with fucking machetes. We paved the way for you motherfuckers. We came through this bitch with the machetes. We chopped all the fucking trees down. We had to take all the bushes up, rake all the motherfucking leaves up. You showed up when it was a fucking road through here. You living on Easy Street, motherfucker. You ain't been through what we've been through. We had to go through the jungle to get to this motherfucking point. And a lot of these new people don't understand that shit, man. They ain't there yet. They ain't there yet. He said, I'm having some cookies. Watch. Hey, I should go bake some cookies tonight. It's as hot as a motherfucker, man. It's hot as a motherfucker, man. Shit, I should go bake some fucking cookies. This is weird. Generation X, bro. Shit, for real, man. And I tell you, we have been through so much shit. So when a lot of riders don't understand why drivers act a certain way, like, hey, don't put your foot on my, my dashboard. Motherfucker, I'm not a 27-year-old kid. I'm from the era of fucking respect. You jump in somebody's car, you put your feet on the floor. That's where your feet go. If these motherfuckers be trying to put their feet up on the console, I have my elbow right here. One time a girl tried to put her foot on my motherfucking console. I said, excuse me. She said, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you are sorry, motherfucker. I was going to call your ass sorry too, but I just didn't. Put your fucking feet on the floor. I mean, people, I don't like, what the fuck is wrong with people, man? It's like, you don't do that shit to people. You don't hop in somebody's fucking car, put your feet up on their fucking console and shit because you paid six fucking dollars. This is like a $30,000 car, $40,000 car, $60,000 fucking car, $80,000 fucking cars out here. And you motherfuckers putting y'all feet up like $6 bought you this? Fuck that. Put your feet on the floor. And I'm one of those motherfuckers that's quick to say it. I won't put this bitch in drive. I'll tell you, put your feet on the floor. If you don't, you can get the fuck out. I mean, I'm trying to offer you a ride to get to where you're getting to for the $6 you fucking paid. Because I'm sure not getting shit for this fucking ride. I paid way too much for this fucking car. Joe raggedy ass, put your motherfucking shoes on my console. Nah, not happening. And that shit has happened a few times. When I was driving a Jeep sometimes. Motherfuckers wanted, can we stand up? No, you can't stand up. If some shit fucking happened in my Jeep with you standing the fuck up, I'm in trouble for being an idiot to let you fucking stand up. Anybody can pull out in front of us. I got to slam on brakes or I rear in those motherfuckers. You go flying out the motherfucking top and decapitate your fucking self or something. People are stupid, man. Motherfuckers are stupid. <laughs> uh, oh, thank you. Keep it real with Dom. My man Dom's in the chat. I was just talking about you the other night to somebody, man. Shit. Jeff, you got to tell us your I am screen name. What? What? Your first I am screen. <laughs> That's funny shit. That's funny shit. Yeah. Fucking. When I used to have AOL, you know, the little fucking shit used to spin up like dong, 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 dong. And then was that keep fucking spinning and shit like a little fucking hourglass. And I'm like sitting there waiting and shit. Then you log on and the screen fucking populate. It take like 30 fucking seconds for all the pixels to fucking come in. And you're like, oh, shit, this is a news. It's like, you know, CNN fucking news and shit. It took that long back then. Now shit's like instant like a motherfucker. Just instant. Shit's quick. No, nah. but for real though, man. I said, I'm one of those drivers, man. I just, I keep it 100 with people, man. And I think that's the type of, of content creator I think I'll always be, no disrespect to my man, but I don't ever see myself changing who I am or how I am for energy out there that don't even belong in my fucking hemisphere. I mean, the people who are like you will gravitate towards you. The people who are not like you will leave you the fuck alone. That's just natural flow of energy. If motherfuckers come around you and they're telling you to change who you are just so you fit in with them, they ain't your fucking people. Them ain't your fucking people. You need to shake their motherfucking hand now because three, four fucking months down the road when they do some shady shit to you, I'm like, damn, I should have listened to Jeff and quit fucking with this motherfucker a long time ago. What up, Charmander? My man. And see, and that's the thing. He says, let me joke now. Rent a Tesla 3. <laughs> don't get me on that shit today, man. I don't even talk about fucking rentals today. No, nah, but see, man, it, I tell people, man, if you need to fucking force yourself to act a certain way to fit in with a certain crowd of fucking people, them ain't your fucking people. And I got, I pick up a lot of fake motherfuckers, man. And no, no shade. Honestly, I tell motherfuckers like this, no shade on Scottsdale because Scottsdale is a very beautiful fucking city. If I had the money, honestly, if I ever hit the fucking lottery, let's say a million, the first place I would go would be Scottsdale. I'd go live up there. And it's not because. I want to hit the club scene and all that shit. They just got some beautiful fucking landscape. They got beautiful property. They got shit overlooking the fucking mountains and everything else. But like I said, at nighttime, when you, if you go outside in your back patio and you turn on your motherfucking porch light in the middle of the night, you'll get a whole bunch of moths flocking to that motherfucker. That's Scottsdale. 
Scottsdale is a very bright light. And all these random ass fucking moths flock to Scottsdale in the middle of the fucking night and they fake ball. These motherfuckers don't tip. They pulling up in nice fucking cars, wearing nice fucking clothes. They all leaving in fucking, you know, broke ass motherfuckers. Credit card balance is too high. They're trying to cheat, uh, get you to cheat a fucking ride. And say, hey, man, just drop me off here, man. Hey, man, can you do like this? They don't fucking give you no money. That's got, they attract the most random ass fucking people. And I sit there and I tell people, you don't have to fucking fake to fit in. Stay in your section of town. Don't go to Scottsdale. Stay where you from. Patronize where you're from. Build up where you from. Don't be fucking fake. Go to Scottsdale because when I'm dropping these motherfuckers off, trust me, I'm dropping them off in some places. These motherfuckers can't afford Scottsdale, but they go there and I'm dropping the ass. I'm, I'm dropping these motherfuckers off by dumpsters with mattresses and shit in front of it. I'm like, I just picked these fucking fine ass girls up from the nicest motherfucking club on the goddamn planet, drove all the way here and we come into a motherfucking parking lot with fucking half speed bumps chunk the fuck off with mattresses in front of goddamn dumpsters. You ain't got to be fake like that. Patronize your part of fucking town. Because the way these motherfuckers be on the phone talking and shit, oh, yeah, girl, this and that. He he talk about he want me and this and that, and he want to be with me. And damn, you know, I'm trying to feel his friend. I'd be like, show the motherfuckers where you live. How about that? And they'd be like, no, I'm not digging in the trash for these motherfuckers. Fuck these girls. I ain't digging in the trash for them. Fuck them. Because they always get these non-tipping random motherfuckers will flock to fucking Scottsdale like moths around a fucking light in the middle of the night. And I just, I ain't never been like that, man. I ain't never been like that. I ain't never been fake like that. Even when I lived in Vegas, I told you motherfuckers, when I lived in Vegas, man, I was a goddamn executive rolling a 1987 Cadillac sedan DeVille on Dayton's. It's motherfuckers up in this bitch with nice big ass S-Class Mercedes and SUVs and Tahoes and all this shit. And I got an old 87 ass motherfucking caddy bumping with big ass subs in the back of that bitch. I'm looking like, like I said, Denzel Washington from goddamn training day pulling up in the parking garage. They be like, who is that? That's our accountant. What? That motherfucker does y'all financial statements for this whole casino? Yeah, that motherfucker right there. I hit that motherfucking corner with them goddamn Dayton shining like a motherfucker. White walls always clean. Interior blue vacuum the fuck down looking like velvet and shit. Man, my car used to stay fucking clean. And I tell motherfuckers, I did not have to be fake to fit in with casino. They knew me. They said, this dude is smart as a motherfucker, but he still g the fuck up, though. It's like he is still St. Louis and Memphis. This motherfucker likes what he likes. He likes fucking Cadillacs on D's. He don't like to get a fucking Subaru. He don't want a Subaru. This motherfucker don't want no fucking Tahoe. He wants a Cadillac on D's. So he went and bought one, put some D's on that bitch. Like when they say, throw some D's on that bitch. Just bought a Cadillac. I did that shit for real. When I got my motherfucking good ass contract on the strip, just bought a Cadillac, throw some D's on it. <laughs> shit. Think I didn't. Fuck that. And that was before the song came out. Motherfuckers know how we roll. And that's why that song came out. Because from our era, we would go buy Cadillacs and we throw D's on the motherfuckers. That's what we did in my era. It was not about the song. The song was a reflection on how we really fucking roll. Next video. He said, I love my silver roof. Well, that's when I was a kid, Lisa. I was a kid. I had to have a Cadillac. I ain't buying no Cadillac on D's right now. Right now, I'll get a Subaru because I heard Subaru is putting fucking lift kits on the new cars they got, so you can take them off-road. They're all-wheel drives. You can get the lift kit mod put on there at the dealership before you fucking buy it. Subarus are out in the desert with our Jeeps now. I'm like, hold up. So you telling me a Subaru can come stock with a lift kit? They're like, yep. Trust me. My Now I would buy a fucking Subaru because I'm at the Subaru age right now, motherfucker. I'm off-road. I'm getting away from these motherfuckers. I'm up on a mountain. Subaru that motherfucker up there and have a picnic just overlooking the city. That's how I roll now. Back in the day, Cadillac. Throw some D's on it, don't it? Just bought a Cadillac. <laughs> she said, I had some gold D's. Yeah, bought a Cadillac. Gold, man. My shit was all white. I Like I said, it's on the video dropping at 545 this morning. It'll be on the video because I was actually talking about some shit. I was talking about blown engines. That Cadillac was the 4.1. The 4.1 aluminum engine, instead of the 4,500 with the big 4,500 on the fucking engine, I had 4,100 on the engine. The 4,100s had these aluminum fucking heads that always cracked. Anybody who had a Cadillac that was a 4.1, they knew that head was going to crack. And that's what happened to mine. Fucking head cracked. Blew a fucking rod of that motherfucker. And that was the end of my Cadillac. But I had that bitch for like three years, though. I loved that car. I loved it. But it was just, it was the 4.1. I should have pulled the engine and dropped the 4.5 in that shit. But yeah. 
Oh, yeah, the North Star, man. That was the fast month. That North Star was a that was a burner right there. That shit was a burner. That month, he said it had the DVD player. <laughs> At least they didn't have the 8-track player in that motherfucker. Velvet seats, yup, yup. The fucking velvet seats. But man, 77, Sedan DeVille, big old boat, man. Hey, that's what we need to do, man. If all Uber drivers, if we fucking just went out and bought all these fucking old school fucking Cadillacs and started our own fucking club, man. <laughs> I love old schools. I dropped some girl off like a couple of weeks ago and they had an old ass Cadillac in their fucking carport. And she was like, yeah, that's my dad's car. I was like, she was, I was like, I bet he's probably about 50 years old. She's like, yeah, he's 52. I'm like, I know, because only a motherfucker that age would buy that car. <laughs> that's what we grew up. That was our elegance back then. Cadillacs was our elegance. If you had Cadillac, you could just cruise through town, pull up to a nice ass restaurant. Even now, you pull up to a restaurant in an old ass 88 Cadillac, clean as a motherfucker, all stock. Trust me, everybody walking out the building. Everybody saying, where you get that from? How much you want for it? Because that's Cadillac. The motherfuckers, that shit, it's not even about status. It's just about the ride, man. Those motherfuckers, they was way before their time. Easy motherfucking steering. I mean, you could steer that motherfucker with one finger. That's how easy that shit was. You could pinky steer that motherfucker. They was just easy. But now, nah, all these, like, especially the Beamer. Man, you try to turn the fuck away. That shit's like sports suspension. You got to use both motherfucking hands, and you got to fucking put all your weight on one leg to turn that motherfucker. You be like, come on, bitch, hit the corner. <laughs> <laughs> fuck them bmw shit hey for surreal though man i'm gonna get back to the because y'all don't got me on these cars y'all know i'm a car guy yo motherfuckers be sidetracking me y'all know exactly how to fuck with me man i was having the best motherfucking podcast you motherfuckers started talking about cars we talk about cars all goddamn night y'all fucking with me now and these and y'all talking about air suspension hell yeah man and that was the lincoln's too the lincoln's and the fucking old rivieras they all had air rides Way before air ride was even a fucking thing. You can hear that shit hitting when you get in. And that motherfucker sit, man. Quit talking about fucking cars. Y'all gonna have me on this shit all night. <laughs> this is old. Jay, read some of my posts if you can. You got some posts? Where's some posts at? I'm, I'm trying to see if you got some posts in here. Wait a minute. I'm going down here. Thanks. Let's go down here. Oh, there you go. What up, Jay? Much love from Boston, my community. Hey. My subs love you, brother. I do too. Hey, man, I appreciate you, Brian, man. That's my man right there, DoorDash Suck, Brian. And I'm going to tell you something about DoorDash Sucks. Let me tell you something about his channels. Now, when I first got in the ride share, you know, I, it's not that I was negative. I was still kind of like happy and excited about being on YouTube and being in ride share. I was still excited, you know, the market wasn't as shitty. And I was all, and I was looking at DoorDash Sucks. I didn't know shit about DoorDash. So I started watching DoorDash Sucks to see what exactly it sucked about. This motherfucker has never missed. Brian has never missed. His ass was on this shit a long time ago. He is on point for every fucking thing he's ever said from back then till now. He has never missed. And I won't say that shit about a lot of channels. His energy and his vibe has always been the same, and he has never fucking missed. When I watched his fucking channel a long time ago, I was like, man, this dude hate motherfucking DoorDash. I don't do DoorDash, so I don't know. Everybody who has a problem with fucking DoorDash, he was saying that shit two years ago about it. This motherfucker been saying what was going to happen the whole fucking time. He's been saying that everybody has current problems. You're late. He was saying this shit two years ago. He was saying what was going to happen and nobody listened to him. And he does videos. He he rarely shows his face. He was on Pedro a few times. He rarely shows his face because he does more videos like, you know, just talking about how he drives his content and shit like that. But not a single thing he has ever said has not been true. And. He's kind of helped me explain ride share. The way I discuss ride share and talk about ride share, you might could probably thank him for that shit because I'm not scared. Like this motherfucker, he ain't scared of DoorDash. I ain't scared of Uber and Lyft. I'm not. A lot of motherfuckers scared to keep it 100. They scared to talk about how raggedy these motherfucking apps be, how they spread you along and fucking throttle you and string you on and put dummy ass motherfucking surges all over the place just to get you to drive far somewhere. When you watch real channels and you see real energy and you see the real comments and you hear the real fucking stories, there's still money out there to be made, but you've got to know where you are. Know the woods you're walking through because there's poison ivy over here. There's fucking strawberries over here. There's poison oak over here. There's motherfucking blackberries over here. Know the woods you're walking through. And some of these fucking channels, they do not tell you the whole story about the woods. They're going to tell you about the strawberries, the blackberries, the fucking apple tree, the orange tree. But they ain't telling you about the poison ivy, the poison oak, the motherfucking water moccasins. They ain't telling you every fucking thing. 
DoorDash sucks will tell you every fucking thing. Trust me, he ain't gonna miss. And you're gonna watch that shit and be like, hmm. Yeah, Dom, I feel you, man. But see, Lyft, Lyft and Uber are better and worse in different markets. And I'll tell you this, they they do different shit with the app. No app is gonna be a hundred percent static on what it is. They're all doing different shit in different markets. Some do upfront fares, some don't. Some do surges and challenges, some don't. Some do fucking ride streaks, some don't. So what they do, they're seeing what works for the corporate profit line. They're saying which region is making more money. They have teams of fucking financial people, just like any corporation. When I worked in, in a casino, we had three or four different financial departments within the casino. We had AR, we had AP, we had fucking general ledger. You got general ledger. Excuse me. You got sales and marketing. You got all these different fucking financial departments. So Lyft and Uber are the same fucking way. And they're saying around this region, what are you guys doing in the California region? Well, we're doing this. What's your profit line look like this? Okay, well, it's not working. Maybe you should be doing like what Michigan's doing. Michigan's doing this and they're generating this much profit. What's Michigan doing? Well, they're not doing what Tennessee is doing. Oh, they're doing what Arizona's doing. What's Arizona doing? They're doing a little bit of what Wyoming is doing, but not what Mississippi is doing. So everybody's got all these different fucked up markets all over the place of people trying different strategies and different tactics to see which region is more profitable for the apps. And that's what they're doing. So California will never be like equal to Arizona on Uber or Lyft. They're doing two different things to see who's generating more profits with the markets they're in. Arizona will never be like fucking Mississippi. Mississippi won't be like Florida. Florida won't be like New York. Each one of these places have to do different shit to see what affects the bottom line differently. It's like scientific scientific experiments they're doing with ride share. They can't just all do the same fucking shit because they'll never know what works and what don't work if everybody's doing the same fucking thing. So they got to fuck everything around, moving shit around, seeing what fucking works. Yeah, you're right, Keith, man. Each app does. That's why you see some people going, oh, man, Uber's better in my region. Oh, Lyft's better in my region because they're all doing different shit. And if they don't like set a weekly daily amount and make excuses, go get it. No matter what the apps are doing. That's why, I, you know, and I tried to run on my videos. Y'all motherfuckers saw I was trying to just run Uber by itself. I tried. I was mad at Lyft for the $20 shit. I said, fuck Lyft. I'm going to run Uber straight. That shit's hard to do. It's hard to do one app. You've got to have delivery. You've got to have ride share. You've got to have, you know, roadie or something like that. You know, Instagram. You've got to have something other because each app is going to push you to that fucking limit. Man, what is uh, the CEO said by 2025, if drivers don't convert electric, they will not be able to drive on their platform. I feel this coming to all gaps. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. They're going to try to make everybody convert over. That's why motherfuckers got to get in and get money right now. And they're going to stress people out to force them. I tell motherfuckers, I'll drive electric if you pay off my fucking gas car. If you ain't paying off my gas car, I'm not going out renting an electric to fucking double, triple fat in your fucking pockets. Because if I'm going to go out and buy me an electric car, these gas cars got to be paid off first. So if you want to force me to do something, then we need to sit down at the table and negotiate. Everything's a fucking negotiation. If all drivers said, we'll go electric if you cover the loans on all of our motherfucking gas cars. Now, for people to say, well, that's fucking crazy. Well, I think paying off all fucking student loans is crazy, too. Forgiving all student loans is crazy. I think that shit's fucking crazy. But when you want to get an agenda done, you make a drastic fucking measure. If you want certain people to boost the fucking economy, you forgive 100% of the fucking student loans. If you want us to all go fucking electric, you forgive all of our fucking gas car loans. Do some drastic shit if you want drastic results. Because that's a drastic fucking thing. He's like, oh, everybody's got to drive electric. Well, you need to pay off everybody gas fucking cars then because we bought these motherfuckers. We own loans on these. They might not be worth shit to them. But to us, that fucking loan is still on the books. That loan's got to go somewhere. So if they ain't covering that fucking loan, I can't fuck with no electric. If you say, you know what, we'll actually pay your car off, but you have to agree to buy another electric car. And you can keep your gas car. That's your personal car to ride around. You don't got to do ride share with it. We'll pay that motherfucker off, but you've got to do ride share in this gas, in this electric car. Cool, let's go. I mean, if you're paying off everybody's fucking college loans and forbearing all their fucking college loans, say, hey, we're going to forgive all college, forgive all gas car loans of people who have been ride share drivers for X amount of fucking years. Or oh, if you've been in for at least 12 months, we automatically forgive your gas car loan automatically. And you can now go out and boost the economy by buying a fucking electric car with the money you just saved of us paying off your gas car. Cool. Let's talk. I mean, everything's negotiable. Everything's negotiable. But you ain't going to stress me the fuck out by saying you got a gas car loan and now you got an electric car loan. Fuck you. Shit ain't happening. Shit ain't happening. 
I mean, how about you use all that fucking forbearance and forgiveness money you was going to do all these college loans with and say, we're going to give all that shit to ride share drivers on their cars instead. Let's make, because ride share drivers, we boost the economy. We the ones out buying motherfucking cookies at midnight. We buying gas all fucking night. We paying for electric. We buying tires. We're buying brakes. We buying windows and window regulators. We buying fucking mats. We are boosting the fucking economy by using these fucking cars past the point of normally using a car. We go to different areas. We eat dinner in fucking places we ain't even never ate dinner at. I'm eating dinner at motherfucking Sizzler in part of towns I ain't never fucking go to. But I'm boosting the economy of that part of town by eating that ragged ass motherfucking Sizzler. I'm eating dirt, dusty ass motherfucking tacos and I don't even eat fucking Taco Bell. I mean, these dusty ass fucking tacos, these ragged ass motherfucking tacos that Jack in the Box, we are boosting the economy as ride share drivers. So if you don't see ride share drivers as the boost for the economy, but you're going to say, oh, well, we're going to forgive all the loans of these people who took out college loans. What do they do for the economy? Do they do the same as we do? Less as we do? More as we do? I mean, if we're talking about boosting the economy, let's boost this motherfucker. Everything's negotiable. Man. Man, is it? <laughs> hey, that's funny shit. So, hell yeah, thanks, Jeff. I will be rolling buying cookies at Quick Trip at night. Them big ass fucking cookies is nice, man. Shit, shit. Yeah, exactly. Robert Reese said that most drive so they can pay those loans off. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Most people out here driving to pay loans off. And it's like, because they, they traditional job wasn't cutting it. Because with a traditional job, this is what happens. You are at a ceiling. When you, when you go get a fucking salary, the only way you can do more than what your salary is doing is by doing time and a half or double time or working on a motherfucking holiday or working on your day off. That's the only thing you can do to boost the amount of money you're getting out of that fucking job. With ride share, shit, the sky's the fucking limit. But not only is the sky the limit, the fucking floor is not the limit. You can go under the floor. You can go negative fucking around in ride share. You can, you can lose more than what is worth fucking around with ride share. And that's what not a lot of people fucking see. All they see is us making all this fucking money. Ooh, look at all this money these ride share drivers make. Look. Well, it took us a while to get to this point. We had to fucking do a lot of shit to get to this point. We didn't just wake up one fucking day and Uber just transferred all this fucking money in our account. No, we had to go get our cars maintained. We had to make sure the fucking all the shit was right. We had to make sure we didn't have bald motherfucking front tires. We had to make sure the brakes was good and we could stop at a fucking stoplight instead of sliding through that motherfucker. A lot of shit you got to do in ride share. And people think, oh, man, you just go fucking sign up. You pass your background. You're good to fucking go. Two weeks later, these motherfuckers hit a pothole and the whole fucking ball joint pop apart. I'm like, well, you had these ragged ass fucking ball joints on your car for the past four years. Motherfuckers been telling you to get them swapped out. Now you hit a pothole at 60 miles an hour. Your shit's on the side of the road. And all you made was $50 with Uber so far. And you got to go pay six, seven hundred to get that ball joint fucking fixed. And all you made was $50. You can go in a whole fucking with ride share. Not a lot of people see that shit, though. Yeah, man, Roger is very fucking cutthroat. Very. Because you can fucking go somewhere, deliver a pack of fucking pancakes to a motherfucker, and they can say, I didn't get my pancakes. Why they eating them bitches? And you get declined real fucking quick. You get deactivated fast as a motherfucker. I'm telling you right now, man, ride share is a cutthroat fucking business. Because a lot of these customers don't give a fuck about you as a driver. They just look for how can they get over. How can, They look at it as a system that they want to get over on. How can I get over on these motherfuckers? These fucking 10 cent hot dogs like Melvin said. <laughs> Those high AR motherfuckers with them 10 cent fucking hot dogs. Fuck them. 1945 ass fucking wages and shit. They trying to pay motherfuckers out here. We living in 2023, goddammit. Got time for that shit. We need money. <laughs> what do you say? He say, bro, facts. My car was paid off and I did ride share all profits. That's right, man. I tell motherfuckers, if, if you involved in ride share, look at the entire gamut of what this industry is really about. Motherfuckers think it's about letting people in your car, getting $9, and them getting out. That's what people think this is. Oh, it's motherfuckers cutthroat. Your shit will be on the side of the fucking road with no fucking tow truck around because you done took a motherfucker 60 miles down the goddamn highway through the fucking desert, and ain't nobody coming to get you for less than fucking $350. And you only made $70 for the fucking day. And you like, shit, I'm in the middle of nowhere. They talking about $350 tow? Shit. This motherfucker can be cutthroat. Man. What what Melvin say? He over there fucking, oh yeah, with that fucking hot dog shit. <laughs> you can tell Mel be watching my videos. He be rolling, man. He be having me fucking crack it up. But see, that's what it is, man. Most of my podcasts and most of my videos, I make them for people just to laugh and have a good time, man. I tell motherfuckers, 
you ain't got to watch my video. Just listen to it while you drive. It's kind of like the motherfucking them books. You know, you be getting them audio fucking books. That's kind of what my videos have become. Fucking audio books. You ain't got to watch shit on this fucking screen. You can put that motherfucking phone on, on the goddamn dad start driving. You're going to be laughing like a motherfucker by the time you fucking pick somebody up. You're going to be like, this stupid motherfucker, exactly what he said just fucking happened to me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Robert Reed said, I told them, watch you. Man, real shit, real shit, brother. Man, I appreciate that, Rob. High facts, Robert Reese. Man. And I'm going to tell you, man, a lot of times when, when we as drivers, when we're online trying to help people and educate people on the proper way to do fucking ride sharing delivery, you will hear me talk about terms of service every once in a while. Because don't shit I do jump outside of terms of service. You'll see motherfuckers, oh, if you tell somebody to tip you in Cash App or Venmo, you know, that's you can get deactivated for that. Why? They, they have a freedom to pay me how they want to. If I accepted motherfucking trinkets and gems as fucking tip payment, motherfuckers get tipped. This one dude got tipped in fucking fruit the other fucking day. You think you don't get deactivated because a motherfucker tipped him with a bag of fruit? Tips are the drivers. That's If a motherfucker want to tip me on cash, have a Venmo, knock yourself the fuck out. If you want to tip me in cash, knock yourself the fuck out. If you want to tip me like, hey, man, I just bought these brand new fucking shoes. They size 10 and a half. What size you wear? 10 and a half. Here you go, bro. I can't get deactivated for that shit, but you get these raggedy motherfuckers in your comments swearing to God they know what the terms of service mean. Terms of service is about you not canceling a fucking ride and making that driver pay you in cash for that same ride. That's when you violate the terms of service. Man, yeah, that, that's what it was. He got paid in fucking mangoes. Motherfucker got paid in fruit. He ain't gonna get deactivated for that shit. This motherfucker might want them mangoes. Fuck what everybody's talking about. He can take the motherfuckers home and eat them. Because what are you going to do with the tip anyway? Probably get the cash tip, go buy some fucking mangoes. He just shortcutted this fucking problem. He just gave him the fucking mangoes. Cool. Man. And I tell motherfuckers, sit up there, and they will try to get in your comments and try to tell you all this shit about ride share without understanding what terms of service is, what anything goes. Half these motherfuckers probably ain't riders or drivers. They probably drove and, and got deactivated by some random shit. But yet they're going to tell you, oh, you can't ask for a tip in cash app. Why not? Where's the violation in that? I mean, you can't ask for somebody to pay you in cash app for the ride so you can just cancel a ride and take them. That's against the fucking terms of service. You've never heard me say that shit. You've never heard me say, yeah, the ride was too far. So I canceled the motherfucker and just told him pay me in cash. No, that's not what I do. If I don't want the fucking ride, I just don't accept it. I see what I'm getting up front, right? And if I don't like the shit, I just fucking decline the motherfucker. If they don't come out the goddamn house, I just cancel the motherfucking go about my way. I don't need to go outside the terms of service to make fucking money. I don't have to. If you know how to use these fucking apps to your advantage and understand what these apps are doing, they're trying to create profit for themselves while you're trying to create profit for yourself. There's a fucking equilibrium you will meet. You will meet a fucking equilibrium and y'all both win. The app will win and you will win. And ain't neither one of you motherfuckers cheated each other. They might steal some tips off your motherfucking ass every once in a while. <laughs> Those little raggedy motherfuckers will steal some tips off your ass. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. I appreciate that, brother. He says, you were cold, brother. You cold. Man, I'd be cold-blooded. No, I don't be like that, man. I'd be trying to be cool with people, man. But I told motherfuckers a long time ago, like, you know, two years ago on a video, that I'm really, I'm okay. I'm not going to say I'm the nicest fucking person. I'm okay. And it, it takes a lot for me because I grew up in the era of, not being nice to fucking strangers because everywhere we went, you had to make sure when you walk through a neighborhood, you can't just walk up. What's up, fellas? Kind of like Jim Carrey on a motherfucking on that goddamn dumb and dumb or walking out 7-Eleven. Hey, fellas, how you doing? Hmm. And then walking up. All righty, then like motherfucker, we don't do that shit. You don't be just nice to motherfuckers like that. We were always raised to kind of be skeptical of motherfuckers around you until you kind of feel the energy and peep the energy. Then you can be cool with a motherfucker. And I'm one of those people that I'll peep energy first. And somebody might not get along with you, but I might get along with you. So I'm not, I've never joined a motorcycle club in my motherfucking life. And I've rode for 25 years because I'm not the type of motherfucker to hate some random motherfucker just because this motherfucker hate him. For all I know, the motherfucker you don't like might be my cousin in another bike club. Now you don't like my cousin in another bike club, but I just joined your fucking bike club. So that means I got to quit your fucking bike club because my cousin is in another one that you don't like. That's why I don't join clubs and shit like that. I don't give a fuck who you like or who you don't like. Everybody's energy is not going to fuck with everybody's energy. I fuck with the people I fuck with because our energy is like that. And a lot of people like to do that joined energy. 
They like to say, well, since I don't like Sally, you can't like Sally. Man, fuck Sally. It's like if me and Sally rock, rock then we rock. She might fucking have a beamer. We laugh and talk about our beamers. I might fuck with Sally. She might be cool as a motherfucker with me and just not like you. The fuck Sally not liking you got to deal with me. Maybe Sally don't like you because your motherfucker stinking ass. Like you say, they say your fucking sweaty ass balls. <laughs> Somebody just said that shit, man. Man, hey, yeah, exactly, E Love man. Say, I'm a nice guy. Say, I'm a good guy, but I'm not nice, motherfucker. I'll tell you that shit. Because I'm somebody you're going to want on your squad. You know, if you got to go somewhere and negotiate some shit with somebody, fucking talk to somebody with something, I'm probably somebody you're going to want on your squad because I might help you get your fucking money back. And it might not be a nice way that we get your fucking money back. It might just be a logical way. They might say, yeah, you're right. Here's your hundred bucks. Because I went and I presented the situation to them. And it might not be a nice way I present it. It might just be a real fucking way. And they go, okay, here's your hundred fucking bucks. Situation resolved. I'm a good guy, but I just might not be nice. It's cool. Man, what was <laughs> hey, love you, Robert Reese, man. Shit. Hey, you, you drive an Indian out of heart. Exactly, man. It'd be motherfuckers out there hating on each other for random shit that they think I need to latch my energy on to. Like, I don't have to latch my energy onto another motherfucker's problems. I don't. And I've never been like that. If I fuck, let's say I fuck with this guy and we all cool, we kicking and shit, we play basketball. But you say, hey man, that dude actually fucked my cousin over fucking. He used to date her two years ago, man. I don't even fuck with him. I understand. So I know if me and him on the squad playing, I'm not going to call you up to come over to the, because y'all don't fuck with each other like that. But that shit ain't got shit to do with me, though. What you and this motherfucker went through with your cousin two years ago ain't got shit to do with me. We use this motherfucker for alley-oops because he cool as a motherfucker. So we've been using him on the squad for alley-oops. He, he been on our team for fucking six months. This is the, this the motherfucker that dunk all the fucking time. So we fucks with him on the court. But you might be like, man, I don't fuck with him, man. Cool. And motherfuckers that know me know. My energy is in like you are independent contractor. Some of us are independent humans. We're independently human, which means I don't have to fuck with anything you don't fuck with or do fuck with. It's all about energy. If our energy ain't the fucking same, cool, it just ain't the same. We can still live in this fucking universe and exist in the way that we exist. Thank you, Aaron. What up, fam? My man. Appreciate it, brother. Appreciate it, man. Every once in a while, I kind of look at the comments. I'll be like, all right. Let me not, but I'm, I'm trying to get this, this audio shit going for y'all to let y'all motherfuckers know, man. A lot of times, you know, the way that this channel is run is, is not, is, is kind of unorthodox, I think, because it started out a certain way. Like, you look at all my older content, shit was pretty funny. I'll be looking at it laughing like a motherfucker. But I get tired of switching energy in every fucking video. I make a 10 minute video, the next one is a totally different energy. Make a 10 minute video, the next one's different energy. Make a 20 minute video, the next one energy. Why don't I just put all that shit the fuck together and just rock with y'all motherfuckers? So y'all got to keep going to different videos that I've done. It's like, I don't want you to have to click on a fucking video every five fucking minutes, get in the car, start the motherfucker, drive for an hour. You on the same video, but it's different energy in that whole fucking podcast. It's been different energy. You done laughed. You done got mad. You done got happy. It's like fucking rolling with a movie and shit. You just rolling with a movie. But then you get these ADHD motherfuckers. I only want to watch a video that's every five minutes. Nobody want to be touching a screen every five fucking minutes. Just drive, motherfucker. You out here to make money. Drive. And when you're done driving, if you want to watch something, go watch a fucking movie. Turn on Netflix. Go watch a fucking movie. Because sometimes the shit that we're talking about is all about making money. It's not nothing real fucking entertaining. It's really not. It's just real. And sometimes people find being real very entertaining. I know kids love it. When they hear me fucking cuss, man, they be cracking the fuck up. But I'm like, dude. Well, this is how we talk. Them kids be laughing like a mother. They be in the floor cracking the fuck up. And we just talk like normal. I be like, man, you know those dusty motherfuckers and them kids start cracking the fuck up. They be crying laughing, holding their stomach and shit. He just said, you're just so funny. My friend, my son's friends be saying that. Man, your dad is so funny. I'm like, this shit ain't funny. It's real. These motherfuckers is dusty. <laughs> it's like, it's just, I keep it 100. <laughs> shit. Oh, 60 lift drivers in the queue. Fuck that. Mm-mm. What up, Tony, the Driven Dad? I see you in the chat, brother. I see you in the chat. Man. Hey, I'm going live in a little bit. Independent humans. I'm going to make sure that it's dead all. Hey, man. Real shit, Rob. Real shit, man. You got you to gotta understand, man. We all in this shit. Even though we all independent of each other, we need to hope for the best for each other. And it ain't nothing wrong with hoping for the best for another driver. Wait and save. Oh, yeah. The wait and save. Oh, yeah. Like I said, I did a video a few weeks back when a dude chose wait and save 
And I showed up early and I was in an alleyway. I was actually sitting in a motherfucking alleyway and he was taking forever. I didn't know why. Thing is, the dude wasn't ready yet. He wasn't ready. His name was Tobias. It was on a video. His name was Tobias. He wasn't ready yet because he told me in the car, I chose wait and save. I didn't, I didn't want you were too close. Say so first it said you were far, then all of a sudden it said you're like two minutes away because I was sitting in a parking lot down the street from him. He chose wait and save because he wanted to save money. Lyft kicked out the other driver and sent my ass, and he wasn't ready yet. He almost got canceled. Because I'm sitting in the motherfucking alleyway next to fucking trash cans and shit, brick walls and shit. I'm like, man, fuck this shit. This dude, because I never knew he chose wait and save and he wasn't ready. So that's the lift shit right there. Motherfuckers that chose wait and save. Like, God damn. <laughs> so he the one with all the cars. No, I think Tobias was the other kid. It was a brick wall. I was sitting next to a brick wall and it was a trash can next to me and trash cans ahead. And it was a big ass white fucking apartment building with bars on the windows and shit. And I'm sitting in the motherfucking alleyway like, okay. But he chose wait and save. He wasn't ready for a ride yet. That's why he was taking so long. And he texted me and said, hey, give me one minute. I was like, all right, cool, cool. Yeah, exactly. If you don't reply back, shit, boop, I'm out, gone. Yeah, but Robert Reese, man, real shit, man. We all independent humans, man. And like I said, I look out for other drivers because, you know, the, the ride share industry has been kind of fucking shitty for a lot of people. I think the fact that a lot of ride share drivers got berated by so many people for doing ride share. Just think, remember back in the day when everybody used to be like, they used to be scared to tell a motherfucker they met him on the internet. Where'd you meet her from? Craigslist, internet, you know, a dating site. It Because it was, it was bad. It was like taboo to meet a motherfucker on the internet because that just wasn't the energy back then. We was used to meeting motherfuckers at a house party, at school, at work. And all of a sudden, well, I met him on the internet. Oh, you met somebody on the internet. Ugh. And that's how now you meet somebody on the internet. It's everything. Oh, I met him on the internet. Oh, cool. What site was you on? It's cool as a motherfucker. That's how ride share used to be. What do you do for a living? I drive ride share. Ooh, really? Like, can you afford it? Like, do you make money? And that's how ride share used to be. I deliver hot dogs. For real? Yeah. Shit, I show these motherfuckers I delivered a sandwich the other day and I got $45 for delivering one sandwich. Damn. Yeah. More than you making two hours, motherfucker, doing whatever it is you do. It took me 15 minutes. I dropped off this motherfucking sandwich. It was a meatball sub. Motherfucker really wanted it that bad. Damn. Yeah, exactly. And that's how ride share is. So a lot of ride share drivers felt berated for so long, beat down for so long, mentally ashamed to tell a motherfucker they drive ride share. Ooh, you drive ride share? Ashamed? Me, I'm like, motherfucker, I'm proud to drive fucking ride share because I wake up, I eat breakfast. By the time I wake up and start driving, like four or five hours have passed. I fucking swam two times. I've ate fucking ice cream, popsicles and shit, fed the dogs and shit. I am proud to drive fucking ride share. Motherfucker can't take that pride out of me by looking at me sideways. I look at them motherfuckers sideways like, well, you the dumb motherfucker because you can't even go take a piss when you want to. You got to ask your boss if you can go take a piss. I just take one because I feel like it. I'm like a grown up. You got to ask, you, is it okay if I take my break at 10 o'clock? Like, okay, you can take your break at 10 o'clock. That's fine. Let me log it into the system. You're taking your break at 10 o'clock. To me, that ain't no grown up shit. Me, I'm like, you know what? Fuck these motherfuckers. I'm going to turn this app off. Boop. And I'll fucking, <laughs> exactly. Dunk that hot dog in a root beer flow, motherfucker. <laughs> $20. But see, that's what it is, though, man. A lot of people want to, they, drivers have been berated for so long, berated for so fucking long. They get on these YouTube channels. Drivers will get on these YouTube channels and berate other drivers. Oh, I'm better than you. Oh, my car is fancier than yours. Oh, I make more per week than you make. Oh, I do. It's like, why are you getting over here trying to berate another fucking driver when we try to raise motherfuckers up to take care of their families? Who the fuck are you? Have you been mentally beat so fucking bad by these goddamn riders, you feel the need to jump on a ride share channel and beat down other ride share drivers? Is that how you really fuck? Oh, I'm... I'm the king of this shit. I'm number one. I'm the number one driver. I do the best, better than anybody around. Who gives a fuck, dog? You probably living like shit and you sitting over here talking shit to everybody to make yourself feel better. We over here raising motherfuckers up. And we like, Mike, my man, what's good? Mike from Australia, my man, what's good, brother? What's good? And I tell people, man, half these drivers been beat up for so fucking long mentally, they don't see no other way to be. Their energy has been shot down by so many fucking people. They think they can just walk in. Oh, well, I feel like the top of the food chain. I'm, I'm up here higher than you guys. I'm, motherfucker, you dropped off the same fucking hot dog pack that I dropped off yesterday. We in the same fucking boat. Only difference is who's making the higher profit margins to be able to take care of their fucking families. We educate on higher profit margins. Because if you're spending 500 
to make 500, you at zero. I can spend 200 to make 700, I'm at 500. And you say, well, you know, it's about gross revenue. It ain't about gross. It's about how much can you save in expenses to make that profit margin open up wider and wider and wider. And it's a lot of motherfuckers out there over a 10 hour span. They will drive a full tank of motherfucking gas. Go put $60 in, drain that motherfucking gas tank. But like I made $250. You really made $190. And it took you $60 to fucking even get there. I can drive a quarter of a fucking tank. $15. And net like 160 fucking bucks and still have three fourths of a fucking tank to go because we drive with our brains out here and we educate other drivers to do it. I never say I'm a better driver than you because I drive like this. Maybe in your market, that's the only way you can drive. So I can't berate you for that. That's just your market like that. But for these motherfuckers to jump on our channels where well, you guys are dumb, you guys are wasting so much fucking time. You guys. I'm like, motherfucker, what's your credit score? What's your bank account looking like? Because I, I don't know, man. You giving me advice. You probably a broke motherfucker trying to give somebody advice. And we don't take advice from broke motherfuckers. We all been at some point where we needed to come up a little better than what we are. So we over here lifting each other up. If you only got two grand in your fucking bank right now, my job is to make sure that motherfucker says four grand next month. That's my job. Not to put you down because you only got two grand. For all I know, some shit might have happened. You might have to put a new roof on your motherfucking house. So that's where all your money went. I don't know where your money went. I don't live with you. But my job is not to know what the fuck you spend your money on, but to make sure you have more of it. That's all I give a fuck about. Do you got more of it? And if I'm just constantly throwing you up under the fucking bus because, oh, you're not making nothing. You ain't making nothing. I don't know that. I don't know what you're spending this shit on. But my job is to know you're not investing a whole lot to make a profit. You got to take your fucking time we through these motherfucking transactions get this fucking money. That's your job. All these random motherfuckers on the internet trying to fucking berate us. That's because they have been put down by so many motherfuckers in a family, friends, ex-girlfriends, ex-boyfriends, co-workers that they used to fucking work with talking shit about them. And now they want to come around us trying to make themselves feel better by talking shit about us. And they don't know shit about us. <laughs> it's like, Dude, do you even know who the fuck we are? You have no idea. You just stepped into the fucking room, walking in. Hey, I'm better than everybody in here. Motherfucker, we could all be millionaires for all you fucking know. You have no idea. You don't know a single motherfucker in here. We could all be done hit the lottery and just be hanging on my motherfucking channel for the fuck of it. You have no idea. So you need to back the fuck up. Read the room. Make sure you know everybody in this motherfucker first. Start picking everybody's brains for good ideas on how you can fucking operate in your market. Stack money, make money, take care of your family, invest in other shit. So when Russia deactivates your ass, you got a fucking something else going on. That's it. That's what we do around here. The yeah, man. Yeah, exactly. Russia at least is real shit. All they do is, you know, customers make customers be like, man, Russia drivers make good money, don't they? Because they've seen the Teslas. They've seen fucking Mercedes and Yukons and fucking Navigators. They've seen all these fucking cars out there now. And they're all ride share cars. And they're all like, well, shit. How much money do you motherfuckers really make to be picking me up in this big ass fucking escalator? How much money are you really making? Exactly. So you can't just be raped motherfuckers because we're ride share drivers. Like I said, back in the day, it used to be the whole thing about we met on the internet. Ooh, meeting people on the internet's weird. Ride share is weird. Oh my God, you do ride share? Ride share is weird. What the fuck? Now they're like, damn, man, ride share is a fucking cash cow. Actually, I got a part time job. I might go do ride share. Actually, I'm about to get fired. I think I'm going to go do ride share. Actually, my job is seasonal. I'm going to start doing ride share. Actually, I'm going to quit. And start doing ride share. Motherfuckers is at that level now. Because they understand what the fuck is going on now. This was an industry. It was never about us being drivers. A lot of us are former executives, teachers, dads, everything else. But yet we sitting here driving, sharing our fucking cars with people, sharing life, sharing stories, sharing fucking energy. That's what ride share is all about. And they return that fucking energy. Hey, man, here's five bucks. Here's 20 bucks. They sharing that fucking energy back with us. And that's what ride share is all about. But these raggedy motherfuckers out here, they don't even get it. They don't even get it, man. <laughs> Aaron said, love your fucking energy. Jeff. I can listen to you for days. Man, man. Melvin said, they would be crying. They put 150,000 miles a year and now their car broke down. Yeah, exactly. They got to learn how to maintain those motherfuckers. Now, Aaron, man, I, I tell cats, man, even when I was young, you know, I, I took this class in college called public speaking. It was funny. Public speaking. And... My the speech was supposed to, I think everybody's speech is supposed to take like 10 fucking minutes. And I'm sitting there giving my speech and everything else. And I swear everybody was laughing the entire 10 fucking minutes 
the next person after me, I can't even remember who it was, but all I remember when he came up to class, he was like, yeah, it's going to be kind of hard to follow that. My speech is not that exciting. <laughs> shit was so funny. I remember that. That was back at Drake. That was, I remember that shit. That shit was funny as hell. But then I did a, a speech one time on the, um, the Mercedes Dimer Chrysler merger. That was in uh, accounting 402, mergers and acquisitions at UNLV. It was in mergers and acquisitions. So we had a group of four and we had a guy that was from the State Department. He was in my fucking group. Cool ass fucking dude. He was from like Brazil or Paraguay or something like that. So they had a real heavy accent. So they didn't want him to speak. And then the girl was kind of timid. She was kind of shy. They didn't want her to speak. And they was like, Jeff, we need you to do this, man. And everybody was like, man, this motherfucker going, it's like, I don't know if, if we can trust him to do mergers and acquisitions. He'd be up there laughing and shit like that. We did the mergers and acquisitions, Dimer Chrysler, fucking uh, Dimer Chrysler, Mercedes Benz fucking thing, whatever, the whole merger. It was about a 30 minute, 40 minute fucking, we had fucking slash show PowerPoint, all of this shit. Man, it was motherfuckers in there clapping, laughing, dying. It was like a whole fucking comedy special about fucking Dimer Chrysler merger and shit like that. And they were like, dude, we have never had a, a fucking accounting presentation that was so goddamn funny. That shit was hilarious. But that's where I come from. Man. I just come from. I'm not scared of people, man. I can talk to people. It's cool. When I used to work for uh, the 100 Academy, it was a charter school out in Las Vegas. I worked for them and I was living in Las Vegas at the time. We had to come to Scottsdale. We went to the plaza, Scottsdale up at the plaza. Now, wait, that was the, I think, now the plaza was for another one. We went actually to, no, it was the plaza because that's when the, we had the big meeting. It was at the plaza and they had this huge conference room there. So what they did, wait a minute. We came here twice. The plaza was the workshops. I'm fucking sorry about this because I got to tell the story right because motherfuckers, this shit's going on record. So I can't tell no bullshit lying fucking story. The plaza was about the workshops. We stayed at the plaza with the villas. That was the workshop. We stayed at JW Marriott way the fuck up north, uh, way up Tatum for this thing. So we get there. It was all these school teachers and even Miss Taylor. Miss Taylor from Kirkwood High. Miss Taylor from Kirkwood High was at this motherfucker. She walked up to me afterwards and like, wait a minute, Jeff Watts. And I was like, yeah. And I was a financial manager for a fucking charter school at the time. She was like, you took my English class at Kirkwood High in St. Louis, Missouri. I was like, bullshit, Miss Taylor. That was my motherfucking teacher. But let me tell you how they saw me up there. So we're up at the JW Marriott, 3,000 motherfucking teachers, all these financial executives, all these people around and everything else like that. So they were like, Jeff, we need you to do a presentation. So you got all these motherfuckers, you know, in the crowd, everything else. I got to do this big presentation about the financial status of the school I'm at, like how much money we're making, how much money we're taking in, how we're budgeting. And we use one of the teachers to bounce back and forth. And so what I did, I, I ran it like it was the news broadcast. I was supposed to be the news anchor and the girl's supposed to be my co-anchor. 3000 fucking teachers, financial people, everything else laughing they ass off the whole fucking time. Cause I told people it's like, it's, it's accounting, but you can make the shit funny. It's like, it don't gotta be lame shit. So we had, and that's what I remember about Arizona coming to Arizona, having everybody fucking dying laughing. It was like people was buying me drinks and shit. I'd like, dude, I gotta buy you a shot, man. This shit was funny as hell, dude. I gotta buy you a shot. So we all went dancing at night, like 3,000 teachers and financial executives, everybody all over the place. We all out there drinking, kicking, and having a fucking blast. And they're like, dude, your presentation was funny as a motherfucker, man. That's that's the background I come from. Like I was never fucking scared to just chat with people and to be okay with helping people. I never had to put people down or berate people to get to where I am. And I run into that a lot on YouTube and that shit irritates the fuck out of me because I've never been like that. I never jumped on somebody's page or somebody's channel to say, hey, man, I don't like your content, man. I, I really don't. I don't like your content. I don't like shit about. I just don't like the direct. I never did that to nobody because I'm not that funky ass energy of a person to jump on somebody's channel to say, you know, I don't like your fucking shit, man. I'm out of here. It's not like it's fucking Facebook. You don't got to announce you leaving, motherfucker. Just unsub and go. What the fuck? But these raggedy motherfuckers love to fucking get they shit energy. They shit energy looking for a place to release shit energy. So they jump on your motherfucking channel. Oh, man, I don't like this. Oh, man, I can't do this. I can't. Nobody ask you, motherfucker. All you had to do was unsub and go. Nobody would have fucking noticed. Trust me. Nobody would have fucking noticed you walking out the room. But yet. You find different pots of energy on the internet, YouTube, Facebook, all these places. These motherfuckers really think they have to announce their departure 
as if it makes a fucking difference. It really don't. It's like, okay. It's like, nobody even knew you was in the fucking party. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> and it's like, I'm not that. I've just never been that guy. So you will never see me. Yeah, exactly. That shit. Take your tail to the Titanic, motherfucker. See you. With the fucking remote control. The PlayStation fucking remote control. But see, that's I've just not been a shitty person. There's been pages that I've unsubbed just because it was like, okay, that page is talking about, you know, maybe it was talking about building something out of carbon fiber. And I subbed the dude's page who was talking about carbon fiber. But I already did what I wanted to do with the carbon fiber. I don't have to sub them no more. So I just unsub. I don't do the car. Now I bought the carbon fiber piece I needed. It might be, you know, something about figuring out a Jeep or a trail or something crazy, whatever. I just unsub that because I don't have to do that anymore. I don't jump on their motherfucking channel. Hey, man. Your content is, you know, it's it's getting old. I already did my fucking, you know, carbon fiber shit, man. I'm I'm out of here. I can't watch this shit, man. Who gives a fuck? They look at me like, who the fuck is an Uber Jeep AZ any fucking way? The most random motherfuckers will jump on your fucking channel. Hey, man, I can't watch this, man. This motherfucking shit, man. I can't. Then take your monkey ass home somewhere. What the fuck? It's like, don't I give a fuck about you, dog. And it's not me being disrespectful about it. But I think it's real fucking like stupid for you to sit the fuck in here just to make a fucking goddamn broadcast like you want the fucking microphone in the podium hey everybody in the party uh uh i'm leaving the fucking club right now hope you guys have a great time motherfucker i might fucking know you <laughs> hey this is the motherfucker that announced they leaving goddamn subway sandwiches hey everybody i already ate my fucking meatball sub i, I think i'm gonna leave right now but you guys enjoy your motherfucking italian sub who give don't i fucking know you the fuck out of subway dog on yeah man i swear it's like i don't know why people are like that like what makes motherfuckers jump on facebook pages hey man you fucking bait sucks i'm tired of seeing your post i'm out of here okay you didn't have to say shit just unsub and go about your fucking business nobody even know who the fuck you are it's like they want to be known for something because they're nobody and and that type of energy is starting to pop up in certain in my fucking some of my videos. Man, I can't watch no video for no fucking hour. So I didn't make this motherfucker for you then. That's like you just going to a fucking dealership. Hey man, you guys are selling fucking vans and station wagons here. I wanted a sports car. Then what the fuck are you doing in a van and station wagon goddamn car lot, you raggedy motherfucker? Does it look like a sports car is around here? I mean, people be killing me, man, killing me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, I swear, dog, I swear, man. I'm because I'm simple, dude. I'm simple. If, if I don't like shit, I don't even say the shit I don't like. It's a lot of shit I don't like. But I, you don't see me going, oh man, let me go over here and let these motherfuckers know I don't like this. I'm a, hey man, I don't like it. Don't nobody give a fuck. Like, who the fuck are you? I'm just letting you know. Cool. <laughs> it's like, okay, you random motherfucker. Cool. But see, and that's the thing, man. I Tom, same shit, Tom. Hey, I, I tell motherfuckers all the time, I'm going to keep 100. I might make these motherfuckers look stupid on the way out the door, but, you know, they ain't have to say shit. They didn't. And I'm I'm that cat that I'll always be this way. There's nothing nobody can say to make me wake up one fucking day and go, man, I got to stop being Jeff and be somebody else. Hey, SB, you good? Sorry I had to move my car. Shit, exactly. But see, and that's the thing. I'll never wake up and, and be somebody different because a random motherfucker chose to jump on my channel and say some shit they didn't like. I mean, the fact that they even said that shows me we ain't even in the same fucking ballpark of energy, motherfucker. The cats I fuck with, they would just disappear. They wouldn't even say shit. Motherfucker don't like my shit, so... I mean, it, at first, I remember when I first started, it was always motherfuckers putting thumbs down on my shit. I'm like, why even put the energy forth to put thumbs down on something? That, that fucks me up. Why don't you just scroll past it? I mean... The end of thumbs down energy. Every once in a while, like every time I drop videos, it's like one or two thumbs down. The shit laughs because I've been getting thumbs down since I was before I was even fucking monetized. I had like 800 motherfucking subs. Motherfuckers thumbs down to my shit. I'm almost at 5,000 fucking subs. Motherfuckers still thumbs down to my shit. And it's the same raggedy motherfuckers. There's always one or two people. But it's like, you think this sub, this thumbs down is going to change the way I do shit? No, it just lets me know. I don't rock with motherfuckers like you. That's all that lets me know. And I'm doing okay rocking with the motherfuckers I'm rocking with because we growing. This channel is growing. The energy is growing. The love for the ride share community, us sharing information, helping the motherfuckers. Like I said, Juan Vargas be hitting me up. Jeff, Surge, down south, turn your fucking phone on. Video dropping tomorrow morning. We'll show you what the fuck Juan Vargas did. 
I'm telling you, everything I tell you motherfuckers about really happened. I don't got to fake it for no fucking body. I don't do pranks. I don't do fake shit. I ain't chasing fucking clout. I talk about more random ass drivers that don't have no motherfucking YouTube page. All the drivers I rock with, all the people I fuck with, they don't even have YouTube pages. They just average motherfuckers like me. We rock together. I don't got to fucking chase clout to make this channel seem more important than what it is. This channel ain't shit but a bunch of average ass drivers making good fucking money to take care of our families. That's what we're here for. We're not a whole bunch of motherfuckers with 300,000 motherfucking subs and 8,000 motherfucking come in and fuck all that. We just random motherfuckers. We all making this fucking money. And that's what we do. So when Juan Vargas, like I said, this motherfucker hit me up, Jeff, sub, that means Jeff, it's a motherfucking surge right now. Tempe, turn your fucking phone on. How did the motherfucker know I didn't have my phone on? Don't know. But I, I actually showed you motherfuckers the shit. So I the video that's dropping tomorrow, turn my fucking phone on, nothing but surge. Nothing but surge. And I was done for the night because I was already pissed off at the apps. And I'd say that shit in the video. It shows me driving, 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 being done, doing my motherfucking thing. Then Juan Vargas hit me the fuck up, put me back on the road. As drivers, that's how we do for each other. Juan didn't have to say shit to me. Juan ain't no hater ass motherfucking driver, though. Juan is a man with the family that says Jeff should be making money to feed his fucking family. Let me hit Jeff up. I hit up motherfucking King James. Hey, this is where we at. Money's down here. This is what we do as drivers. This is what this channel is. A lot of people don't fuck with us. They don't rock with us. And that's totally cool. And I want motherfuckers to realize you don't have to fuck with me or fuck with my content. We will be okay. We will be making fucking money. We will be okay. This channel will still grow without your raggedy ass around. We are making money. We will still help each other in the best ways we can with the best energy we got, with the best inspiration and motivation we got. We don't need your raggedy ass around here. Every driver on this motherfucking channel going to be okay. Every rider that's on this channel going to be okay because the riders are going to be like, man, I know how to take care of these drivers. All these raggedy motherfuckers want is $5. Shit. Hey, appreciate the ride, dog. $5 cash. Ryder, the motherfucker sitting next to him like, how did you know to get that driver $5 cash? Oh, I watch Uber Jeep AZ. I know I ain't going to tip through the app because the motherfucker might not see it. So I just gave him $5 cash. Go watch Uber Jeep AZ. You'll find out how these motherfuckers be living. These are a bunch of guys out there just doing shit. And I tell motherfuckers all the time, if you're a rider or you're a driver, watch my shit. I don't care. It's just content. It ain't no motherfucking secrets out here. I mean, that's why I say you get a lot of these motherfucking drivers out there to talk about all these secrets and shit and all this secrets. The only thing I say, if some I don't want, if it's some kind of glitch or some kind of hack to the fucking app, don't put that shit on my page. I do not want to be one of them fucking pages. I keep deleting the same motherfucker that keep commenting on my channel all the fucking time about how to save surges and this and that. I done said in so many fucking videos, email me, motherfucker. You slow. You fucking slow. If I'm telling you in every fucking video, don't put this shit on my channel because that's not how we rock over here. We don't put hacks and fucking secrets on my fucking channel. Email me. And if the shit works, I'll show other fucking people behind the scenes, but not on fucking YouTube. You know why? Because then the apps are going to fucking go and change the shit. This is how they're doing. How you know? Because I looked on Uber Jeep AZ and these dumb motherfuckers is all in the goddamn comments talking about it. That's how stupid these motherfuckers is. They told us exactly how they getting through the door. Oh, shit. So all we got to do is just put this door knob up higher. Just put the door knob up higher. They can't get in. Oh, shit. That's how stupid these motherfuckers are. Stop putting that shit on my channel. We don't discuss hacks and glitches on my channel. That's not this type of fucking channel. If you want to discuss a glitch or discuss, discuss a hack, email motherfuckers. That shit should not be on public fucking videos. If you have got a Patreon, tell motherfuckers, Patreon me so you can talk about glitches. Because that's the only way these apps ain't going to see shit. Because they're not fucking patrons. Patreon me. We'll talk about glitches behind the fucking scenes. But these raggedy motherfuckers, man. Woo. They will be writing fucking bra motherfucker. They like, hey, man, if you want to get all this fucking money, just there's this hack you can do to your phone. This is all you got to do. Dumb motherfuckers, man. What up, South Florida? My man, Ricky Moss. It's almost like Ricky Ross. But he Ricky Moss because he be catching them rides like Randy Moss, motherfucker. I be catching them surges, motherfucker. As you need to be Ricky Moss, the surge catcher. 
<laughs> getting that motherfucking money out there. Shit. What do you say? Them fucking dollar fifty hot dogs. Let's be talking about them dollar fifty hot dogs at <laughs> fucking Costco. <laughs> he said they're upsetting you because you went to 7-eleven that's 10 cent hot dogs now they salty <laughs> fuck them old 1945 dusty ass hot dogs and that's 7-eleven them motherfuckers be doing that man they get them goddamn donuts out there them crusty ass donuts they be trying to sell me at full price i'd be like dude and i'll be looking at them they'd be like yeah that's 4 11 i'll be having two donuts i'm looking at them i'm like 4 11 like dude do you see this motherfucker flaking in my hand like the shit's like rain and snow all over the motherfucking counter it's dusty crusty ass motherfucking donut and you're gonna tell me four dollars and eleven cents for these two motherfucking dusty ass donuts i'm putting these motherfuckers back but you can't put them back because you already touched them well what do i do you have to throw them away so you're not gonna let me give you a dollar fifty for these dusty ass motherfucking dirt bomb dirt clog ass motherfucking donuts but you want me to throw them away Man, these motherfuckers are so backwards. Man, they're so fucking backwards. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, man. Man, them donuts be old as a motherfucker. You look at the expiration date, that should be your last motherfucking birthday up on the motherfuckers. I'd be like, wait a minute, I was born then. These motherfucking donuts still there? The fuck? And they ass gonna sit there and try to sell them to you at full price. I tell them motherfuckers, they should have a timer on top of the donut thing. Turn that, it should be a digital fucking timer. When that motherfucker's below a certain like amount of time, them donut prices should drop because they be giving out the crustiest, dustiest motherfucking donuts at full fucking price. All these places be like that. That's why I started going to Bosa Donuts. I'll go to Bosa. Bosa do the shit right there in front of you. They don't give you no crusty fucking shit. These motherfucking 7-Eleven Circle K fucking donuts, I be looking at them like, I can see if y'all just put them out. That's one thing. If you just put them out, charge me full price. Cool, it's fresh. But these motherfuckers be like, them donuts been there all fucking day. Flies probably sitting on the motherfucker. Moths and shit dropping moth motherfucking juice all on the motherfuckers. You want something for full price? I'm like, dude, get this crusty ass fucking donut. <laughs> hey, Ricky, you just said the same shit I said. Fucking ass probably I'm taking a few bites out of them. Window. Man, you on the same shit I'm on. I'm like, dude, this be insects fucking with these donuts. You got nerve to charge me full fucking price? <laughs> Ricky Moss said some ants probably done taking a few bites out of the motherfuckers. That's the shit I'm on, man. Real shit. It's like insects done fucking these donuts. You like $4.11. I'm like, I be looking at these motherfuckers like, is this a joke? Like, you joking with me, right? Like, I'm supposed to, like, be on camera and you supposed to get my fucking expression after you say $4.11 for these dusty-ass motherfucking donuts? And I'm like, he like, dude looking back at me, I'm like, Okay, so you're not joking. You dead motherfucking serious. You won't fall. I mean, dude, I'm like, how do I just, I'm just putting them back. Oh, you can't. You already touched them. So what do I do? Well, you have to throw them away now. I oh, man, I swear to God, I felt like I was on candy motherfucking camera. So you won't let me give them to you for like $1.50 because they're four eleven, but you want me to throw them in the fucking trash because I've touched them now. I'm looking at this motherfucker like, dude. Like, where do they hire you motherfuckers at? Like, is there a goddamn whole fucking application process for dumb motherfuckers, like, in the back? They be like, okay, the intelligent motherfuckers become managers. The dumb motherfuckers, we gonna make them cashiers. <laughs> it's like, man. I'm just... <laughs> oh, yeah. See, that's the thing. That's why I'm like, dude, you can't even fuck with these places like Quick Trip and Circle K for donuts sometimes. Like I said, when the shit's fresh, oh, fuck, yeah, I'll give you the 411. I'm cool with that shit. When you motherfuckers see this shit snowing fucking dandruff all over the fucking counter, glaze ain't supposed to look like dandruff, motherfucker. Glaze is it sticks to the donut. This motherfucker donut is half like naked and half glazed now because the shit done fell off all on the fucking counter. And this motherfucker like four <laughs> eleven, dead ass. <laughs> that motherfucker. That's what they need to put over the fucking top of them donuts. Dead ass donuts. These motherfuckers is dead ass. The price is the fucking price. Dead ass. <laughs> oh, Tony. Oh, where's my phone at? Bruh, I don't have my phone on me. I got you. I got you. Trust me. I got you on that shit. These, man. I did that shit in the store the other day. I was rolling. I, I should have put it on the video for the bar, but I didn't. I didn't. God damn it. I forgot about it till you just said something. It's in my fucking phone. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> this shit's funny as hell. Wait till you see it. Oh, this is a. And I even said your name on this motherfucker. You gonna see that shit on video and just die laughing. I was like, when I walked through the store and saw that shit, I was like, you're fucking kidding me, fucking Tony. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Dude, that shit, that's you all fucking day. Wait, wait, I might have to drop a short for that one. I'm gonna have to drop a fucking short and tag you in that motherfucker because that shit's funny. <laughs> Like, no, I'm not going to put that on one of my two hour specials till later. At some point, I will. I'll put it on there, but I'm going to make it a short first and then I'm going to drop it in one of my fucking two hour videos on top of that. Because, you know, I'll be, I'm going to start throwing little commercials in my little fucking videos because sometimes you be hearing me talk about Russia. You need a break from that shit. So I'm going to start creating little fucked up commercials about the shit I be going through at night, like the motherfucking bar fucks coffee. <laughs> that shit had me dying. Fucking bar fucks coffee. <laughs> The place you take your one night stand from the night before at the club, motherfucker. <laughs> Shit, bar fucks. The OG spot for coffee. Motherfucker, I got some funny ass commercials coming out, though. Because I'm telling you, the shit I see just cruising around is funny as a motherfucker. The shit I see just riding around is definitely fucking comedy. <laughs> Barf yucks. Exactly. <laughs> fucking that goddamn Starbucks shit. But I do. I get my motherfucking caramel frappuccino every once in a while. That's just how I roll. Well, we've been on this motherfucker for an hour and a half. But my other, the the part one, I got to go and label the part one because the part one was good. We was rolling with part one before the camera dropped. Fucking with Microsoft Edge, raggedy ass motherfucking shit. I swear I have raggedy fucking browsers and shit. My motherfucking browser from like 1945. It's like internet wasn't even out then. Motherfucking Microsoft Edge was. Y'all just didn't see that shit. Y'all wasn't paying attention. <laughs> like, internet wasn't out yet motherfucker but shit man i hope y'all motherfuckers out there making some money now it's only eight o'clock here in arizona so i hope everybody got out made some good fucking money like i tell people it's you gotta stop really stop talking about you know max money for the day because a lot of people out there making bad decisions trying to hit a goal amount of money what you need to do is hit a goal amount of profit look like what i do is i look at my gas tank and I say, okay, I got four fucking quarters in my gas tank. Treat that shit like a motherfucking football game. First quarter, I need to be at least a hundred bucks of good decisions. Second quarter, I'm gonna try to I can stay around 95, 75, because I know shit start getting a little drunk. By third quarter, it's really time to hit it. Out of a whole tank of fuel, I believe if I because it only holds four like 350 miles uh for a full tank. It used to be 400 because of the gas shit. So 350, if I get at least two dollars a mile then that means I can make $700 off of $50. So if I can do $700 off of 50 bucks, good. Usually I run about that, Melvin. That's what I run about, four, four to 450 to 500. That's all I can do. I cannot break that fucking barrier. And it's not because, you know, I'm not driving or I'm not making good decisions. It's just, this is summertime. It's fucking slow as shit. Because I mean, shit, when I did fucking the Super Bowl, I mean, I was making eight, 900 a day off of one tank of fucking gas. Easy. I think, and I was driving different back then. I was on Lux. I wasn't even on UberX mainly. I was on Lux back then. I think I can do at least 700 on a full tank of fucking gas. 7,800 on a full tank. That's $2 a fucking mile, 700 bucks, full tank of gas. And that's taking a few of those, you know, big bangers, you know, $14 for two miles. But then every once in a while, I get a dollar fifteen a mile or a dollar fifty a mile. I get one of them rides to commute across town. But I'm thinking for a full tank of fucking gas, if I just keep, Basing my driving on that, I'll get somewhere. Because every day is not going to be a $200 day. Motherfuckers out here, you know, trying to get 200 bucks a day, they'll blaze to a whole fucking tank of gas and be like, man, I'm only at $135, you know, $140. I just went through a whole tank of gas. That's because you're doing some shit rides. You're taking 80 cent a mile, 50 cent a mile. You're doing shit rides. Use your gas tank as your metric for how much money you should be at. Exactly. Lux is the fucking chill. You turn that motherfucker on to kick back. Cause you might get one, but most likely you won't. <laughs> Lux is the lounge, the Lux lounge, motherfucker. That's what we need to call it, Lux lounge. Motherfucker, put a goddamn red light on the app and everything. Kick back with a big ass cigar. Where you at? I'm at the Lux lounge, motherfucker. I might not get one. <laughs> Man, yeah, it's been a long summer, Lisa. Very long summer. So, and that's what I do, Driven Man Tony. I do all short trips, and I think if I do that when when school comes back in, oh my god, man. UberX, short trips around campus, party nights, frat nights, shit like that. Man, everything going to be $8 a mile, $8 a mile, two miles. Going back to campus, $9, two miles. Man, I'm going to probably, I'll tell you, I'm going to hit that $800 for one full tank. I can't get past $400, $500. I can't. It's just like I'm doing everything in my fucking power, choosing a good rise. By half a tank, I'm always sitting around two two fifty. dollars always about two two fifty dollars at half a tank. So I'm like, I'm, I'm on track. I'm on track. 
but it's that that last fucking end of the week because I'll fill up like Sunday or something like that. And it's round about when it gets real slow around Wednesday, Thursday, when it gets fucking slow as shit. Friday, it picks back up. Saturday, it picks back up. But it's like, by that time, I can't fucking do it. I'm like, Ugh. but I'm going to get it though, man. And that's what it is. We got to start using our fucking gas meters as our decision makers. Because this motherfucker that will sit up there, do three long distance fucking rides and already be sitting at a half a tank. And they're like, yeah, I got $60. How you do three long distance motherfucking rides? You had sixty fucking dollars because I did a twenty dollar ride for thirty six miles, did another twenty dollar ride for thirty nine miles, and another twenty dollar ride for fucking you know thirty one miles. So you just went well over a hundred fucking miles, and you sent it almost a half a tank of fucking gas. You got sixty bucks. Normal driver at a half a tank is at two hundred. That's a hundred and forty dollar fucking variance. Yeah, exactly. Twenty six miles per gallon. Yup, yup. Got to keep doing them short rides, man. Because I run at 26 miles a gallon. But if I get on the highway, I put on eco, I get like 40, 50, 60 miles a fucking gallon. I got a video of that shit showing motherfuckers the one dropping, like I said, and it's showing how my miles per gallon on the highway works. You put that shit on eco, the whole screen goes blue, and that should be like 45, 50, 60 miles a gallon. I'll be just cruising. Ain't no engine power. You're just cruising. But I like the short rides because I'm in, I'm out, $5, $10, $20 tips. Like I said, there, there'd be times when I'll open my motherfucking wallet and I'm like, shit, I'll take some of that shit out because there's so many fucking fives and tens and shit in there. I'll leave that shit at home. I'm like, I'm only going to go out with like 15 bucks tonight. I'm not taking a whole wallet because I might drop my motherfucking wallet getting out of the car and lose every fucking thing I just made. I don't want to do that shit. Oh, yeah, 44 gallon is not. Yeah, that's not bad, man. 44 gallon, that's good. Because like I said, when you driving like that and you making money on the fucking road like that, man. I mean, you never run out of gas and you keep hitting them short fucking bangers and you getting, you know, two dollars a mile, three dollars a mile, eight dollars a mile. You getting money like that. That shit adds up quick. You you look at your gas and be like, dude, I use like one eighth of a tank of fuel and I'm sitting at one hundred dollars. So you can make two hundred and a quarter tank. That's eight hundred for a whole fucking tank. That's the shit I'm on. Eight hundred for a full tank. But I got to get at least a hundred for that first quarter. If I can make a hundred for that first quarter tank of fucking gas, I'm sitting at a hundred fucking dollars. I'm on my way. But usually I'm I'm already at fucking, I use that first quarter. I'm at about 120. And I'm like, shit, I'm 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 fucking $80 short of where I should be. And that's, you know, that's just how I analyze how I drive and how I try to go out and do something. But a lot of people, they don't drive like we drive, man. They like to save time. Oh, if I'm on the road for 10 hours, I want to drive for 10 hours. If you drive for 10 hours straight and you online for 10 hours, your ass is going to make about $200 total in 10 hours. We can make $200 in four or five hours of being online, three hours of fucking driving. We be kicking out $60 an hour, $70 an hour. The video I'm just dropping show I made over 80, almost $90 an hour, $90 an hour doing nothing but short rides, $90 an hour. And I don't bullshit people. So I had to put it on fucking video to show motherfuckers and go through everything because I'm sick of these YouTubers bullshitting motherfuckers and people in comments bullshitting. I don't bullshit. If I said it, it's in the fucking video coming at you because I don't have time to fuck with people, man. The money is out there. The smart drivers are going to fucking win this shit before these busy, busy lawnmower motherfuckers are going to do anything. We out there really driving smart. And if you don't drive smart, you're going to lose your ass off in this game of ride share. You're going to lose. 100,000 fucking miles driving at 50 cent a mile. You sitting at $50,000 over the year. We getting fucking $2 a mile. That means all we got to drive is 25,000 miles and we sitting where you sitting. You drove 100,000 to get 50,000. We drove 25,000 to get to 50,000. That's a $75,000 fucking variance. If I can get $2 a fucking mile for 25,000 miles, I'm at 50 G's. These motherfuckers drive 100,000 miles at 50 cent a mile to get 50 G's. We ain't the same. 25,000 versus 100,000. Any idiot. I can ask a fucking fifth grader. What is more? 100,000 miles or 25,000 miles? 100,000 miles. What is more? $50,000 or $50,000? What's the same? Exactly. Thank you, you fifth grade motherfucker. Go eat lunch, you motherfucker. Here's a bologna sandwich with lettuce on it, goddammit. <laughs> Fuck these. Here's a goddamn dusty donut, you little fifth grader. Thank you for being smarter than half these motherfucking rides you're driving. <laughs> Man, and that's my shit, man. I'm trying to drive 25, 30,000 miles at two, three dollars a mile. 30,000 miles at three dollars a mile is 90,000 fucking dollars. 90,000 dollars. If you want to fucking make 90 grand driving the shit way of being busy, 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 
You got to drive well over 100,000 fucking miles because you're taking so much shit. You ain't getting nowhere. If you're driving at 80 cents a fucking mile, it's your average. Then you got to drive 100,000 fucking miles to make $80,000. It's your average is 110 is a dollar 10. Then that means you got to drive 100,000 miles just to make $110, $110,000. When you can drive 40,000 miles at $3 a mile and make $120,000, you're driving 40,000 fucking miles, but you keeping your average up so fucking high, you just stacking fucking money. But these motherfuckers don't see it like that. They'll rather go through 100,000 miles worth of tires, brakes, oil, antifreeze, window fucking regulators. They'll rather go through 100,000 miles of fucking with this car, running this motherfucking to the ground, instead of saying, I'm going to drive 40,000 and get the same amount. The same fucking amount. If I drive 30,000 miles at $3, that's 90 Gs. So you just got to keep it up to $3 a mile. That's it. Do short trips all motherfucking day. Short trips, $15 for one mile. Then your next fucking trip might be, you know, $6 for two miles. The shit's going to average out in the end. Yeah, exactly. Driven, <laughs> which is heavier, 100 pounds of bricks or 100 pounds of, of du dusty, dusty. <laughs> I just saw that shit. <laughs> You're nuts. <laughs> it's all... <laughs> He said, fucking, what's uh, Tony talking about? Some, what's every 100 pounds of bricks, 100 pounds of dusty ass D's nuts? <laughs> I just saw that shit at the end, man. You got to warn me, man. You got to fucking put up a goddamn a peanut or something before your comments, man. Something. That shit's funny as a motherfucker. That shit caught me off guard right there. <laughs> I'm expecting something serious. I should have known. Tony, you ain't getting shit serious. It's motherfucker, man. Hey, but on the real, why I got everybody on the fucking live, man, if you haven't been to Driven Dad's page and looked at the video of the scammer that tried to scam him, you missing out. YouTube's fucking finest. You missing the fuck out. Trust me. I don't give a fuck what you do before this week is over. Look at that fucking video. You think I'm bad. Woo, that motherfucking scammer. Tony had that scammer hot. You think I cuss a lot? Oh, Tony had that motherfucker hot. <laughs> He was calling Tony everything under the fucking sun. Man, that shit, that was the, and this motherfucker started out with, hello, Tony, this is, you know, such and such from Lyft Support, and the ride you're taking right now is not an official ride. Actually, this ride was a ride we sent to help you get a bonus, but you need to give us your credit card from out. This dude started all this fucking shit, and Tony was like, okay, and Tony just raised his dirt, and the guy was like, sir, yeah, exactly, put that shit in there. That everybody saved that motherfucking video. What up, Christine? That video, save that video. Play that shit anytime you want a good laugh. I thought I was bad. Tony had that... <laughs> Tony had his ass lit up. Dude was mad as a motherfucker. I was like, dude, this is the best video of any scam I've ever seen. This is how you turn the tables on these motherfuckers. Tony got the cancel fee and everything, boy. Man, and then Tony called him back. That's the fucked up part. Tony called the scammer back. <laughs> he had to call him back. And this is the thing. The guy was like, this is lift support. If that was really lift support, the same dude wouldn't have answered the fucking phone. It's like it's the customer. He said the customer is not a real the customer is not a real customer. That was just a customer that we set up to make sure you're going to get this bonus and blah, blah, blah. And Tony's like, OK, cool. No problem. Tony's just driving. Tony's sitting there waiting. And all of a sudden. The dude just lit into his because he realized what Tony was doing. Lit Tony's ass up. Tony was like, let me tell you something, motherfucker. The only place yo zoo was like, man, I'm going to be putting my motherfucking feet up in my motherfucking mansion. My feet is up, baby. I'm rich, bitch. My feet is up. Tony was like, the only place your feet going to be up is in prison, motherfucker. <laughs> He said, you're going to be somebody's bitch. Your leg's going to be up in the air, you motherfucker. I was rolling. Let Tony let him have it. Tony let him have it. That shit was the best fucking scam right there. I was like, this motherfucker went from lift support to goddamn prisoner 562-978, like within a minute. <laughs> Tony ate his ass up. Man, that was the best fucking scam. Dude, and I, I'm telling people, man, there's it's some funny shit out there that happened to us in these streets. Motherfuckers don't, like, y'all think we're comedians. We ain't comedians. This is real shit. Like, this, we don't got to stage no fucking pranks and no dumb shit in Home Depot going, excuse me, sir, but uh, can you fucking, we don't got to stage shit. We can keep it 100 with Ryan share. This shit's funny as a motherfucker. 
<laughs> exactly. This is some real shit. <laughs> hey, Melly Mel, sit throw those legs in the air. <laughs> Hey, Ricky Moss catching them surges. He's a lift support the inmate number 9 2478. Man, that's just funny as hell. No, Tony ate his ass up. I get at the Tony. That, I've seen some funny shit. I've seen some funny shit. Tony ate his ass. I'm so glad you recorded that. So glad. Because usually we see scammer videos and you get the most nerdiest motherfuckers. Right now, there's a scam going on on Lyft trying to get your information. And with that information, you don't need to give your information because it's potentially a scam. Tony was like, man, your motherfucking ass, your goddamn land's going to be up in the air, you motherfucking bitch. Yo, <laughs> Tony, <laughs> that call was not professional. <laughs> that call was the opposite of professional. Tony ate his ass up. They was going back and forth. Boy, I was like, dude, this is the fucking best. <laughs> Tony fucking had me dying. Dude, hey, like I said, you hear a lot of people talk about scammers, a lot of people saying shit. Nah, this video takes it. This video, if you ever want to read about the Lyft scams or the, the Uber scams and all that, this video is it. You don't need to watch no fucking nerdy fucking, yeah, and, and somebody's going to call you and offer you a gift card, and they're going to say that in order to get your gift card, you no, nah, fuck that. Look at Tony's video. Trust me, it's it's textbook, textbook. This is how they fucking doing it, and this is how you beat these motherfuckers at the helm. <laughs> motherfucker, you want the fifty dollars, or you gonna sit there for five dollars? You raggedy motherfucker, you gonna sit there for five fucking dollars? You stupid, you broke bitch, you broke bitch. Tony was like, the only bitch is gonna be is you fucking with Bub on the bottom bunk, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> they was going at it, dude. Went from lift support to fucking inmate. <laughs> Y'all got me spitting out fucking shit. I just spit out my motherfucking drink. <laughs> he said, Tony next gonna tell him about these nuts. I spit out my motherfucking drink at me. I just spit fucking drink all over the motherfucking console. <laughs> That shit's fucked up. Man, y'all gonna be in here fucking spitting out motherfucking juice and shit. Hey, I can't fuck with y'all no more, man. I can't even drink shit. When Tony and Melvin in the house, don't drink shit. Trust me. Trust me. Don't fuck with it. Y'all must have me short circuit my motherfucking board out, man. Man, man, man. That shit was... Hey, he came with the warning label, but still... <laughs> he put it out. <laughs> I fucking spit that shit out quick as a motherfucker. Man, that shit was funny. But no, man. <clears throat> No, uh, that's man. That, like I said, when y'all check out that fucking video, trust me, it y'all need to share that motherfucker on all fucking outlets, Facebook, share that shit on fucking Instagram. That video just from how it started to how it ended was was just that shit. Like when they say, damn, well, that escalated. <laughs> this motherfucker, Tony escalated his call. I'm going to escalate this call to customer service. Tony escalated that motherfucker. OK. Shit, Tony took that motherfucker upstairs. I think the executives need to fucking talk about this cancellation. Let me talk to the executives. <laughs> Tony escalated that motherfucker quick. <laughs> they was going at it, man. And Tony was cool. He was cool as a motherfucker when he was like, you know what? He said, he said the nice live is sponsored by these nuts. <laughs> Oh, Melvin, thank you. Thank you. Melvin just gave me an idea of what to do with that video I shot. Oh, hey, you motherfuckers, we just, we, they, basically, we all just collabed on this fucking video because Tony started the shit with the whole D's nuts. Melvin just gave me the fucking intro, not for tomorrow's video because it's already done. The next video, I got you, Melvin. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Hey, Melvin and Tony, y'all just did my intro for the next fucking video later this week. The one tomorrow ain't got it yet. I think Thursday or Friday when I drop that one, yeah. Y'all just did my motherfucking intro. <laughs> Man, that shit's funny as hell. That shit's funny. I appreciate the help. Cause man, sometimes I don't know how to start some of these videos. I just I used to just start them just straight. Just fucking as soon as they open up, they just start fucking playing. But an intro, intros are kind of funny. I be watching other people's intros. Some of them be cool. Some of them be lame. But for the most part, it's like, I think an intro will be something to kind of invite people into the energy they about to fuck with. So the motherfuckers don't think, oh, this is Lyft customer support. And with this page, what you're going to see on this video is the proper way to conduct yourself with a scammer who possibly, now Tony be like, 
motherfucker, you bitch, your motherfucking legs gonna be up in the air, motherfucker. I'm getting my cancellation fee, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, the eight minute clean intro. Fuck that shit. I start off the fucking bat. I'll be like, sup, you bitches. <laughs> Are you motherfuckers ready? You motherfuckers ain't ready yet. If you're ready, hit the fucking like button, you bitches. <laughs> they be like, we can't monetize this. Sorry, we can't. He, he started out too hard. So he can't monetize this video. Okay, actually put this motherfucker on the back page. Like this video don't belong on fucking on YouTube homepage. <laughs> he said the first word, bar fucks. <laughs> I know they monetize that shit. That was funny as hell. They monetize that shit right off the bat. I was like, cool. What up, John Post, my man? Hey, I was just talking about you, Alpha John. I was just talking about fucking potholes and assholes. I was just talking about that shit, man. That's funny as hell. Yeah. He said, the first ad I see is hop, skip, drive. Motherfucker said, bar fucks, hop, skip, drive. Like, wait a minute. This ain't supposed to be monetized. This motherfucker started out cussing right out the gate. It's like, hey, we, we can't help it. This dude is going to do what he does. He don't give a fuck. <laughs> man. Man, man, man. Tony, man, y'all, y'all, in the, I'm glad this live, like I said, it's an hour, 50 minutes. We're going to end this fucking live. Like I said, we got a lot of funny shit that we talked about this whole live. But y'all ended it perfectly. I like the way this motherfucker ended. This live ended perfect, man. Because that shit, hey, if y'all want to see what the fuck we really talking about, go to the Driven Dads page, look at the scammer, the fucking scam video, and watch how that shit went from a peaceful picnic at the motherfucking park to an E4 fucking tornado. <laughs> Because that's all I can explain. It was like, <laughs> that shit, man, man, man. Hey, Dig Bar, thank you, brother. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Hell yeah. <laughs> Don't even tell your scammer that. These nuts. Man, that that was the most, that was the funniest shit I've seen in a long time. And I think, like I said, I'll be doing some funny shit, I think. But that video, man, man, that shit went from a fucking picnic with goddamn bologna sandwiches and lettuce to fucking E4. <laughs> it's like Hurricane Lisa came to that motherfucker. <laughs> I was like, man, that shit was hilarious. I could listen to that fucking video all day, every day. He was he was so fucking mad. <laughs> I was like, that shit. And that's the thing, that was a scammer. He was lift support. Like right before that, he was lift support. And that shit, Tony opened up the floodgates on that fucking shit. He blew that whole operation up. He blew that motherfucker up. <laughs> He exposed the whole operation, man. That shit's funny as hell. But, hey, I appreciate y'all coming through this live, man. I appreciate the super chats. Y'all know I appreciate that shit. Because, like I said, I don't ask for nothing, man. Y'all be just helping me out, hooking me up. I'm going to keep finding fucking ways to make these lives better, make my videos more entertaining. And this is what I do. You know what I'm saying? It's, we don't we don't even put each other up or down. We just help each other the fuck out. If we can get out there and make that money, let's laugh a little bit, have a good time. We know the apps are shitty. They're going to do some ratchet shit all the fucking time to us. And all we can do is, like y'all see on my next video, was dropping at 5.45 in the morning. We fucking come home and we turn every fucking thing off and we kick back. And if you got good drivers in your area, they going to fucking be like, hey, surge is up. Get up. Get going to this area. And that's what my man Juan Vargas did to me. He fucking hit me up and was like, Jeff, get to this fucking area. Surge is up. And that's, like I said, we all look out for each other. That's the best we can do. Well, Mel Melly Mel's the scammer was mad. Took his money, came out on 10 cent hot dogs. Exactly. <laughs> he kicking his feet up on a 1945 salary looking ass. <laughs> he got about the prison flip flops. That motherfucker's like, shit. Motherfucker took my five dollars. I can't get them prison flip flops. But motherfucker, Walmart. He's stealing motherfuckers out of somebody's cart and take off running. Shit, that fucking shit, man. That motherfucker was so raggedy. That fucking whole video had me rolling. But no. Hey, I appreciate y'all, man. Tony, man, I'm glad you posted that link in there because, like I said, I don't know how to do that shit, so y'all be helping me to fuck out all the fucking time. Now, I appreciate Hold up for a second. Let me go in here real quick. Uh, I had to add Mel as a moderator. Uh, Let's do like this. Wait a minute. I think that's how you do it. I don't know. But I had to do Melvin like that. Cause like I said, cause Mel, he's in here a lot. He can share some of those motherfucking, um, he can share some of those links and stuff. Cause I don't know how to do that shit, man. Like I said, I'm on YouTube thing and I don't understand how it really works. So hopefully, you know, you guys will help me keep monitoring the chat, moderating this channel. Thanks for giving me that intro for the video coming out Thursday or Friday. I just got to go review some of it, but yes, 
That video Thursday or Friday, when I drop the Wednesday one is coming out tomorrow, already done. Thursday or Friday, woo, that intro gonna be fire. Thank you. I appreciate you, motherfuckers, man. Always, brothers, always. Hey, I'm gonna check y'all later, though, man. I'm out for the night.